is Terrence West for the Townsend Tigers. And Kevin Minter brings him down for LSU. Welcome, everybody, to Baton Rouge. Townsend and number three LSU here on a Saturday night in Death Valley alongside Matt Stinchko, I'm Clay Mantic, Allison Williams working the sidelines tonight. This is a game, Matt, where LSU is trying to work on some things, trying to clean up some messes that they realized they had last week against Auburn. You know, always when you talk with the coaches at LSU, they say the first goal, any coach for that matter, is to secure a victory. But there are areas to clean up offensively and defensively. They gave up some big plays due to some miscommunications. And they're back in. They want to clean that up as well on that side of the Third down at six from Townsend. Grant Enders, the quarterback, fires to the right side, incomplete. That was intended for Spencer Wilkins, the sophomore receiver. And Townsend goes three and out. LSU, by the way, on its first series, a six-play drive covered 32 yards, but it stalled out at about the 30-yard line of Townsend. There's Les Miles in his eighth season as LSU's head coach. And when we talked to Les this week, he said, we want to work on the passing game. I can't imagine he was real inspired after that first series. No, obviously not. You know, there's a number of different aspects, though. One thing that he would, would have been pleased with was the blitz pickup by his running backs, an issue that they had last week versus Auburn, keeping their quarterback upright. Everybody plays a role in that passing game. It's not just the quarterback and receivers. So there were some bright spots. But it wasn't as clean as they would have liked, and clearly they were intent to get the passing game going. So here's Zach Mettenberger. And the upgrade from the combo of Jared Lee, Jefferson last year, it's been slow to materialize on the opening series. Hit Cadron Boone one time. They started to get Spencer Ware going a little bit, but there were a couple of missed opportunities, too. Yeah, you know, they're just leaving his receiver a bit there, and you'll see again to Jarvis Landry, the ball's just behind him. Tremendous athlete, difficult to come down with that catch with the ball placement where it was. For the gun here, this is Russell Shepard finding a scene. He's got a first down and more. Nobody's going to catch it. Russell Shepard. Did he get to that pylon? Yes, touchdown LSU. A 78-yard touchdown run. Boy, it looked like he had it easy into the end zone, and finally he was caught from behind by Jordan Love, but he was still able to get that pylon for a touchdown from 78 yards away. Great hustle by Jordan Love. Russell Shepard is clean into the second level. It's the same play we saw in the first series to Spencer Ware. Russell Shepard's got another gear that maybe Spencer doesn't have. And they get him clean into the secondary. Russell Shepard is a guy that clearly they're intended, getting some touches to. Had back-to-back end-around plays versus Auburn a week ago. If they can't get him the ball in the passing game, clearly they're looking to get him the ball in some form or fashion. Perhaps it'll be in the rushing attack. And he came to LSU four years ago with a ton of hype, and he's still, frankly, trying to live up to it. It's this is being looked at again upstairs. Rocky Good is our replay official again tonight. I think that guy's following us around. <laughs> or we're following him around. That's right. And, and what they're taking a look here is, you know, it looks to me to be pretty clear. The ball, if your body is out of bounds, the ball has to be in the field of play and over the pylon. And to me, well, that looks pretty clear. That's a touchdown. You always want to make sure that you get it right. But as long as he doesn't have a body part touching down out of bounds before that ball crosses the uh, the end line, the plane of the goal line, that's a touchdown. Certainly nothing indisputable, I think, there that would make it overturned. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Confirmed. Our lead referee tonight, Mark Curls, it was confirmed. So that means Rocky Good saw what he needed to see to confirm the call on the field. And Drew Alamar comes on for the extra point. 20 for 20 on PATs this year. Now the first drive stalled out for LSU, but the second one takes one play to get it in the end zone. you got to like the efficiency, that's for sure. It wasn't as clean in the first drive with the passing. Go back to what you know. Give it to a playmaker in the run game. Russell Shepard gets it home for six. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by 
five hour energy hours and hours of energy and in part by Tostitos Tostitos knows how to party pretty kitty like the tiger quite a crowd checking him out here earlier before the start of the game we're probably a little wet this afternoon early evening James Harrison to kick it off there he just saw Russell Shepard who scored that 78 yard touchdown run put LSU on top Ty Smith on the return that's a short one out across the 15 down at the 17 yard line Looking back at this touchdown, we talk about the offensive front for LSU. This is Lyle Collins at the left guard. Watch him pull and kick the defensive end as he gets upfield. They're able to get a nice lead block by Clay Maw. And you get Russell Shepard, a guy with that type of athleticism, clean through the line of scrimmage. You're asking a lot of just about any secondary. I don't care what division of football you're playing in. That offensive line... Hopefully, hopefully going to work on some pass protection here tonight, too. Be interesting to see how that continues to work out with Chris Falk, the left tackle, out for the season with that Ian. Grant Denders keeping himself. Good run. Up to the 25. He's brought down by Kiki Mingo. College Football Daily, your destination for all the latest reports and comprehensive analysis. Our college football experts dissect all the storylines of breaking news each day. It's coming your way weekdays at 1 on ESPNU. A lot of big stories in college football. How about the day for Geno Smith, West Virginia quarterback against Baylor? 500, excuse me, 656 yards passing, 8 touchdowns today. You know what, after the season he's been having, I'm unimpressed. I don't know how many yards he's going to have to throw for to get my attention on <laughs> First Big 12 game, and he sets a Big 12 record. I should say ties with Terrence West on the run. Benny Logan, the defensive tackle, brings him down close to the first down. We'll see if he got it. And he did. First and 10 now for Towson. Their first first down of the night. Benny Logan played in Michael Brocker's shadow last year. Many think uh, he's every bit as talented as Brocker's one was a year ago. Well, they've had a long line of really good defensive linemen at LSU. When you look at Benny Logan, a talented guy, but it's his work ethic, I think, that really takes his abilities to the next level. So he patterned his play after Drake Davis, a guy that a lot of people remember from his days as an LSU tackle. First and 10 at the 27. Enders looks to the right, throws that way, incomplete. Intended for Aaron Banks. Bring up second down. Great tradition of defensive linemen here at LSU. And some of the great names here that have gone to the NFL since 2008. It's a boatload of these guys. Yeah, I mean, you just look through the years, and what's amazing is they just kind of pass the baton here in Baton Rouge. It's just one guy to take it up. When Dorsey leaves, you got Tyson Jackson there waiting, and Ricky Jean went Francois. And then you've got Drake Nevis, and you could go all the way back even to Anthony McFarland and his years back in the 90s. They have studs that play in the interior portion of the defensive front of LSU. Ingo and Montgomery considered both potential first-round NFL picks. Here's Dominique Booker's first carry of the night for the Towson Tigers, who get it to the 30-yard line. Before Lamine Barrow, the weak side linebacker, brings it down. It's a gain of three. Third down and seven now for Towson. Linebackers have been playing pretty well here in the first few weeks of their season for LSU. You hear a lot about the secondary. You hear a lot about the defensive linemen. But these linebackers deserve a lot of credit, too, for the Tigers. Absolutely. I, you know, Going into this season, when you looked at the way the defense deployed for LSU, lots of nickel packages. They've had to stay in base personnel, meaning three linebackers in the game, a lot more often so far this season, and the linebacker position has stepped up thus far. I've third down, pressure. Enders got rid of it quickly. Benny Logan was all over Enders. He felt the heat, got rid of it, throws it incomplete, fourth down. Incomplete. You know the game plan coming into this game for Towson, and it's largely an overmatched football team. And they're giving up size and weight up front was to try to run the football. But it's just so difficult. We just got done talking about a long line of defensive tackles. 
These are the guys that are going to have to step up big for LSU when they get into the meat of the SEC schedule. It makes it all the more difficult for the Towson Tigers to do what they want to do, which is get that ground game established. LSU has allowed only one rushing touchdown all year. That came last week, but Auburn started at the LSU 26 after a turnover. Trying to return this here is Odell Beckham Jr. He'll get it across the 30-yard line to the 32. That's where Zach Mecklenburger and the LSU offense will go back to work. 7.52 here to go in the first 7-0 LSU. Welcome back to Baton Rouge, the SEC on ESPN. One sec, former Georgia All-American lineman. Matt Stinchcomb on Clay Mathic, Allison Williams working the sidelines tonight. 7 0 Tigers of LSU, the number three team in the country. 4 0, 1 0 in the SEC. But after a close call at Auburn, dropped from number two to number three this week. Out in the flat, Mettenberger is complete to Odell Beckham. He's going to be close to a first down. Jordan Love runs him out of bounds. The transfer from Georgia, it's going to be a first down from LSU. Well, clearly, Mettenberger comfortable slinging it out to the perimeter. That's how they opened the game versus Auburn. See, a lot of this horizontal passing game, they want to get it more vertical today. Not so sure about the mustache that Mettenberger is sporting again this week, but uh, he seems to like it a lot. Pitching back to Spencer Ware. It's going to be a pickup of two. Spencer Ware. Second down and eight. All right, this is Mettenberger. Showing up to the ballpark here earlier tonight, looking like Ron Burgundy. Well, I love the fact, he must have known he was going to do this. Kind of a big deal. Got many leather-bound books. You could tell, and he better like that mustache, because Coach Crackthorpe, the quarterback's coach at LSU, said, look, you can have facial hair, but whatever you choose to begin the season, you got to keep it all year. I knew he was laid back. But I'm really starting to like his personality. It's starting to come out. Deep hand out here to Spencer Ware again. He's hit the backfield and dumped. Ware is hit by Monty Gaddis, the middle linebacker. Junior college transfer who has moved into the starting lineup for Towson. It's a loss of two. So now third and long for LSU. Well, this is probably actually a good opportunity given their third down history last week. It's the same play that we saw Russell Shepard score on. The same play on the first possession for LSU that Spencer Ware popped for a big game. Towson's on to it now. This is an opportunity for a third and long for Zach Mettenberg to try to convert. Should have before about 44% on the year on third down conversions. Mettenberger in the pocket has time. Incomplete. Through the hands of the 45-yard line of Cadron Boone. That's the second pass that has gone through his hands tonight. Fourth down. You know, it's just it's a little bit off target. Maybe the first one to Boone should have been caught. This one as well, it's, pro it's not placed where he wants it. You know, that's something that we talked about with Coach Craggs as well earlier in the season. They liked his ball placement. It's not just velocity. It's leading guys into the catch so far tonight. He's had some difficulty with where he's placing the ball. Brad Wing. Puts this one inside the 20 as well. Takes a nice LSU roll inside the 15. There is a penalty flag down, however. And Mark Curls is talking with the other officials on the field. Illegal formation. Number 45, kicking team was not on the line of scrimmage. The five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Timeout. And that's not going to make Les Miles very happy. Nine penalties last week. The average eight a game. Way too many. You're watching college football on ESPN. Presented by Five Hour Energy. Les Miles, his LSU Tigers leading 7 0. 5.55 to go here in the first quarter, but 
LSU just had its first three and out of the night, and a special teams penalty to boot. Still working on cleaning up those mistakes as Grant Enders goes under center for Towson. To pitch it back to Terrence West. Looking to cut the corner on the right side and turns it upfield. Pick up about four, maybe five yards as Jalen Mills, the left cornerback, runs him out of bounds. There's Rob Ambrose, the head coach for Towson. Towson grad. Won the Eddie Robinson Award last year as the FCS National Coach of the Year. Did a great job turning this program completely around. This is a 1-10 football team in 2010. Last year, they were able to win a conference. It's the most competitive, the best conference in the FCS. And he earned that award, no question about it. As a grad, as an alum, it means all that more to him, I'm sure, to get this program reestablished. Second out of five. Play fake, Enders, through behind Tom Ryan, it's a senior receiver, so it's going to bring up third down and five. We have not seen a completed pass for Enders yet, he's 0 for 4. You know, in, in visiting with Coach Ambrose yesterday, he talked about the fact that they recognize you got to get the ball out quickly versus this front. It doesn't make sense to run a bunch of seven-step fun passes versus this defense. It's difficult enough to get open into the secondary, but they've been unsuccessful on the early downs, which is what this LSU defense does traditionally, put you in third long situations. Tipped, gets into the hands of Spencer Wilkins, and he's got a first down. First completion for Grant Enders is tipped at the line, and it results in a first down for Towson. Enders averaging just over 200 yards per game passing, but running into a defense here, which is very good, eighth nationally against the pass. Ego Ferguson, Ferguson got a hit on, yeah, he got a finger on that. And of course, you know, usually you can allow for contact once that happens. You see the defenders for LSU, they're not pleased. They don't want to even give up a third down conversion. This is the first opportunity in life for Towson in this ballgame. How many Booker checks back in at Taylor? Left of Enders. Cox's arm fires deep downfield, running down that right sideline. Aaron Banks well covered. Second down. Ronald Martin. Free safety and coverage for LSU. Sometimes in this ball game, I'm sure they're being objective, but uh, they're letting them play a little bit on the edge, I think, for Towson, letting these uh, offensive linemen Try to do the best that they can versus probably one of the most formidable pairs of defensive ends, a pair of defensive ends that you're going to find in the country, Montgomery and Mingo. And they're going to need all the help that they can get to keep them clean for Grand Enders to be able to operate in the passing game. Second down and 10. Enders looking to the left, now steps up. He's in trouble and he is down. There is Mingo and Montgomery. You talked about them. They converge and bring down the quarterback, Grant Enders. You know, this time, Mingo's the beneficiary. His first sack of the season, he's incredibly explosive, and he's matched up one-on-one -on, -one on the edge. And really, Sam Montgomery was the one that got inside on the pressure and flushes Enders into Mingo. That's the difficulty that you have when you've got two great defensive ends from a protection standpoint. Who are you going to help? you got to pick your poison. Yeah. And right there, Mingo, who's faced a lot of triple teams, double teams this season because of the attention that he's gotten, able to get a sack, and now he's on the board. And now Enders backpedaling, drops it off to Dominique Booker. He can't hang on to it. And now, Towson 0 for 3 on third down attempts tonight. They'll have to punt again. Sam Montgomery, Barkevius Mingo. Talked about it before. Uh, Projected first round draft picks. Montgomery, the reigning SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Four tackles for loss last week, including the safety against the Auburn Tigers, which was huge in that game as it turns out. You know, Sam Montgomery to me is more of a hands on the ground defensive end. You look at Mingo, I picture him more as an outside linebacker, rush end, a guy that can drop. Sam Montgomery. He's a salty guy. He's able to get in there and mix it up. Look out. Here comes Odell Beckham Jr. Penalty flags as he steps across the 40-yard line to the 41. Odell Beckham Jr. 
replacing Tyron Matthew, the All-American return man from last year. Who was, During the you know, return, holding number 80, return team. Mm. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. Boy, keep coming. The penalties. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Georgia's defense coming up with some big plays in that game, but we also saw some soft spots in that Georgia defense today. Yeah, you know, a lot's been said about getting their starters back. That defense looked a little soft to me. Even with Ogletree and Bakari Rambo back, this is what that defense was supposed to look like coming into the season. That's a lot of points they gave them. How good is Jarvis Jones, though? He might be the best defender oh. in the country. Michael Ford, his first carry of the night. It's a good one on first down. He's going to get seven for LSU as they go back to work on offense. Romeo Tucker making the tackle for Towson as LSU leads it seven to nothing late in the first quarter. Michael Ford, he scored LSU's only touchdown last week on a short run. It was a quiet offensive day for LSU. Trying to work on some things here against FCS opponent Towson. On second and four. Ford again. And he's not going to get the first down. He's going to get a couple more. So third down and manageable. As John Desir, the defensive tackle, makes the stop. Now, despite some real concerns offensively, there are a lot of people that still think this might be the best offense that Les Miles has ever had to work with. We're still waiting to see that manifest itself, however. From a raw materials yeah. standpoint, I think that you could probably say that. We haven't seen it borne out on the field of play, specifically in the passing game, but I think the skill sets are certainly there. Third and one. Here's Kenny Hillier. He just lowers his shoulder and picks it up. No, ball comes loose, and Towson says they have it. They do. It's a turnover, and Towson recovers at the 37-yard line. Didn't see it pop out. Looked like Hilliard easily had the first down, but he turns it over. We're coming into this ball game. We talk about, look, this is an FCS opponent. What do you want to do? You want to play cleanly? J.C. Copeland leads up there, and they just get a hat right on the football. Looks like Thomas Bradley was the one who was able to put his helmet right on the ball. Ball security has been something that they wanted to preach last week. Two fumbles at the quarterback position. You look at what that could do in this conference, and regardless of your opponent, when you get into conference play, turnovers are lethal. Already we've seen penalties, and now a turnover for LSU. Great field position here for Townsend. Enders pumps. Plenty of time to throw. Now he's going to run and has some room. Making his way to the sideline and gets out of bounds inside the 35 at the 33. Pretty smart move by the senior out of Millersville, Maryland. Nothing downfield and didn't risk an interception. Well, Coach Ambrose likes Enders. He likes his skill set, but he also likes his decision making. I think that they can trust him even more. They feel like they can trust him more. And this is an offense that can present LSU problems with this type of field position. They're not afraid to jump into some unorthodox formations some overload sets where they'll put a, an extra offensive lineman in the game. This is the type of field position where they'll go for it on fourth down as well. They might be playing for four downs on this possession. Second down and four. Play clock down to three. Enders play fake. Dumps it off short to Spencer Wilkins on the screen. He's got the first down to the 23-yard line. <laughs> You know, Clay, sometimes offenses can use the aggressiveness and the athleticism of the defense against themselves. You see it there a lot of times in the screen game to diffuse some of the pass rush. You hit a quick hitter outside that has a nice wide receiver screen that had the tunnel set up. They're able to capitalize another conversion, pick up a fresh set of downs down here in the red zone where this defense hasn't been as stout. They're much better in the field defense so far this season. Coming up on a minute to go here in the opening quarter. Towson driving for the potential tying score. Here's Terrence West. And he'll pick up a couple. Second down and eight. Kevin Minter, the uh, middle linebacker who's become a star in this LFCU defense, makes the tackle in this Tigers defense, getting very used to playing on a, a short field with their back up against that goal line. Not where they want to be. And, and really, when you look at it, they typically find ways to bow their neck. Right now, this ball is placed about two yards outside what's considered the red zone. They've only had four snaps, red zone snaps, this entire season so far. And they make sure they want to bow their neck here. 
Interesting formation from Towson. Two receivers to the right, stacked. Enders is going to run it. And it's a good run close to the first down. Grant Enders, very mobile at 6'3", 215 pounds. And it is going to be close. To, going to depend on the spot. They give him the first down. I'll tell you what, I've seen him telegraph a pull before. Check out the left guard. He, if you don't know that he's pulling, staying in a, a two-point stance. You see Barkevius Mingo once again. You see that aggressiveness. He comes underneath the block. Unfortunately, they're able to capture the edge because of it. And you lose containment. You get out loose, pick up a fresh set of downs in the red zone. LSU still too many mistakes in that first quarter. They've got the lead, but Towson's got it first and ten at the LSU 13 when we come back to Baton Rouge. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. LSU head coach Les Miles saying this week we've got three goals. Secure victory, cut down on mistakes, and get Zach Mettenberger on track. They're a long way from accomplishing any of that. Yeah, I mean, on that list uh, so far, there's a lot of ball to play, but you see the mistakes tonight. You know, last week, the two fumbles, you already have one tonight. The penalties, the yardage already mounting. They were able to keep the quarterback clean, but it's largely because they had not had many offensive snaps on it. After the LSU turnover, Towson starts second quarter here inside the LSU red zone. From the 13, Enders to hand off to Terrence West. Inside the 10-yard line and down at the 7. Jalen Mills on the tackle. Terrence West, we talk about him from a year ago. 29 touchdowns, didn't even start until... Uh, the final portion of the season got one start. They like him. He's a young guy. They need him to grow up a little bit, but clearly very talented. That Jerry Rice Award for the freshman performer at the FCS level. That's a nice run by him. He's on that Walter Payton Award watch list, which is the FCS Heisman. Second down and four. Enders to West. Gonna get a couple as he gets close to the five yard line. Third down at about two coming up. And we'll see what uh, is in the back of Rob Ambrose's mind as this series continues to unfold. He is not afraid to go for it on fourth down, so he feels he probably has two downs here in his pocket. Well, and you see him there on the sideline. There's no pressure from him in this ball game. And I don't know that he feels it anyway when you visit with him. I think he went four on fourth down 25 times last year. And they, this is certainly, I think, four down territory. We get to uh, pick up here Terrence West. Well, he's going to be close. Stacked up. And pushed back. Eric Reed, the free safety, led the charge. That's a tremendous second effort. I mean, you're met in the backfield. And somehow, keep your legs churning. And Kevin Mentor does a good job of penetrating. To me, you look at a guy like that, you got a signs of life in this ball game. Eric Reed looks like he's shaking up a little bit. And his helmet came off too, so he's going to have to come out for a play. As Craig Lawson comes back out of the field, here's that second effort by Terrence West. He's going to pull a guard. He's met in the backfield. Mentor and Martin waiting on him. And he's just able to push through. Wasn't able to get the first down, but like we said, they're playing. They're playing for a fourth down conversion. And now a timeout here by Towson. And that is their first. Towson located in Towson, Maryland, which is just north of Baltimore. They won the Colonial Athletic Association for the first time last year. And the most improved team in Division One. They were one and ten in 2010, nine and three last year. Rob Ambrose has said it's amazing how the culture has changed there at Towson, and recruiting has become a lot easier. They're getting the attention of some of the local kids. You look at them a year ago, though. They finished uh, 12th in the FCS. They did an excellent job, I think, of uh, of turning this program around largely. Kent State. They were undone. Basically by turnover, six of them in that ball game. I think that was really the hallmark of their turnaround. 
You see 49 rushes, 251 yards on the ground. They're, they're happy to grind it out. But they can be inventive. This offense, you know, Coach Ambrose had four different offensive coordinators as a player. He took a little bit from each one of those years, each different coordinator, and he sprinkled some of it into the offense. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and not even a full yard. Penalty flag. Motion. Ball start. Number 89. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. That's the tight end, Corey Kirby. He's a right tackle by trade. He's been playing tight end the last few weeks because of injury. And, and now Rob Ambrose is going to bring the field goal unit on. Yeah, I got to tell you, too, you see him at the, at the end, of, end of the line there. See the flinch? You know, the crowd got into it just a little bit. We talk about the fact that this is probably the biggest stage Towson's been on. It's easily the biggest stage that they played on. They're going on a silent count. I've been on the end of the line before. It's hard to see that ball move. Anything flinches, and you're moving. And I got more whistles. I don't see any flags there. Now they're going to have a conference. Number one for the defense, helmet came off on the last down. He must remain out of the game for one down. So because of that penalty, Reed thought he could sneak back onto the field, but a play hadn't been run, so he's got to stay out of there. And that's the rule. Doesn't matter if there's a change of possession, really. There has to be one play. It doesn't matter if you're a defender or an offensive player. You have to be out for one snap of the football. Pretty good by the officials to catch that. They're all over. DJ Silvan sets up for the 26-yard field goal attempt, and it's good. He's four for four on the year. So the Towson Tigers under head coach Rob Ambrose on the board. They take advantage of the turnover. Would have liked a touchdown, but they get a field goal. And it's 7-3 here in Baton Rouge. You and I were talking before the game, Matt, that there might not be a lot of shakeup in the top 25. Well, there's some upsets here in the evening games of this Saturday. Well, then, what we were talking about doesn't mean much. Scrap all that conversation. Another short kick as we go down to Allison Williams. Well, guys, maybe this LSU offense can find something to spark them on the field because on the sidelines, really since the beginning of the game, it's been quiet, almost stoic. We know Zach Mettenberger is a good leader, but he is a quiet guy. And honestly, every time he's come off the sidelines, he's gone right to his isolated spot away from the rest of the offense. Very little communication between him and the rest of the players. It's been pretty quiet. The one thing, though, guys, they have to move forward. That's exactly what Spencer Ware told Kenny Hilliard after he fumbled that ball. We We've just got to keep moving forward. All right, Allison, thank you. Here's Mettenberger pumping on first down and incomplete. Nobody home on the near sideline. The closest receiver, James Wright. Other than this big run by Russell Shepard on a little Charlie play with a full cool guard, they've been unsuccessful offensively. And, you know, what's becoming, I think, a little bit more noticeable is an inability to throw towards the middle of the football field. You see the fumble there by Hilliard led to a field goal for Towson. And they opened up this series with an incompletion. And badly off the mark or a miscommunication with his receiver. Mettenberger now 3 of 7 for 27 yards. And now he's going to be sacked at the 22. The 10th sack of the year for the Towson Tigers. It's Thomas Bradley and Monty Gaddis combining on that hit. It's a loss of 10. You know, coming into this game, you'll see it's a full slide protection. You should never have any leaks in the interior portion of your offensive line. Everybody's just protecting the gap. In this instance, to their right, Spencer Ware has some leak on the edge. You know, when you've got seven and eight guys in to protect, only two guys out the route, out the route. You know, when you look at the numbers, they're giving a sack up about what every 13 pass attempts. Why aren't they trying to get him out of the pocket more? We really haven't seen that yet. Here he's in the pocket again and in trouble again. Now on the run. And he's going to throw it away. Closest receiver, and he wasn't that close. Katrin Boone. Some boos coming from the crowd here at Death Valley. And it's a punting situation for the Tigers again. 
Well, when I'm looking at the field now, notice that Alex Hurst, their usual right tackle and left tackle, Frank Beltry, just gets excellent push. You know, Hurst just keeps kicking and keeps kicking all the way back until you're right on top of your quarterback. I think what's becoming, I think, a little bit apparent is that there's there's some discomfort with the protection schemes. Either they don't understand what the protection is or what the protection should be by the offensive line and at the quarterback scheme. Jordan Love gets it across the 35-yard line to the 36. That's where Townsend will have it to start this series with 12-19 to go in the first half. 7-3 LSU on top of Towson with the Towson Tigers coming back on the field offensively. Let's look at that last series for LSU. It's a seven-man protection. What you'll see, you stop. We've got number 44, J.C. Copeland, and number 70. They're both going to have to sort out a two-linebacker blitz. J.C. Copeland, clearly not assigned, unclear who he's got. And when you leave seven guys in there, to try to protect, you can't afford to have leakage on the input, internal portion of your protection scheme. And then to follow that up, they give up another pressure when they're only bringing four downs. The protection has been a concern. It's a growing concern now as they shuffled off into front for LSU. First and 10 for Towson at the 36-yard line. Play fake, Enders, time to throw, crossing route. That's Corey Kirby, the tight end. Ball comes loose, and it looks like LSU's got it. And it's recovered at about the same place on the field that LSU coughed it up on their turnover. Juan Alexander, the linebacker, knocked it loose. Big shot, and a big shot in the arm, perhaps, for an LSU sideline that needs to get energized. We're talking about you know, three incompletions. You have to put the ball away. Corey Kirby... It wasn't even from the shot. That ball is out before the hit is even late. Hey, that ball is coming out. We talk about how he's spent time at tackle. Now, can this LSU offense capitalize on the field position? Barold Simon recovered, and here's Spencer Ware on first down. He's hit in the backfield, and he doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Now we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Lee Jeans. And so far tonight, it's... And unimpressive for Mettenberger. Barkidius Mingo, however, has made a sack. Yeah, K Kiki Mingo gets on the on the board from a sack standpoint. Mettenberger, however, still hasn't been able to get on track. No. I mean, this is what they're going to need. We talked about it coming into passing offense. Here's another second and long. To the flat. That's Jarvis Lambert. It's inside the 35, dives down to the 33-yard line, gets up and starts running, but play was whistled dead. Bring up third down and fairly long again for LSU. Tonight they've had two three and outs, three punts, a fumble. The only spark offensively that we've seen, that 78-yard touchdown run by Russell Shepard. And with meat on this bone on a third down situation, an obvious passing down. Last week in some third and three situations, LSU content to keep the ball on the ground. They have to trust their passing game in these scenarios. They're 0 for 4 tonight on third down. Mettenberger gets rid of it. Boy, that route was almost jumped. Ball is incomplete. Brighton Barr, the strong side linebacker, almost picked off Mettenberger. You know, whatever momentum off a quick change in this offense, clearly unable to jump all over it, Mettenberger. That's a great jump on the ball. You got to credit Towson's. They understand that coming into this ball game, they were unimpressed with the passing game. You visit with Jordan Dangerfield. He said, look, these receivers, they're better after the catch than before the catch. Maybe that's what's being borne out here tonight. It's a 51-yard attempt for Alamo. How about that? Plenty of leg, but missed it. And more frustration for Les Miles and the Bayou Bengals. Celebrating its eighth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.8 million in scholarship money. LSU offensively 
Couldn't take advantage of the short field. They had it at the 36 of Towson after recovering the fumble. But it's the second straight three and out for the LSU Tigers. And now the frustration starting to pour out. You can see it there from Mettenberger on the sideline. Both, both offensive series, both three and out, both all passes as well. Unable to get it done in the passing line. Here's Terrence West for Towson. And he'll plug ahead for a couple of yards. Don't forget BCS Countdown, ESPNU Monday. Our analysts break down the key victories and defeats from week five. Who's going to rise? Who's going to fall? Plus, key matchups for week six. Hard to believe week six we're talking about already. BCS Countdown presented by Allstate on the U at six. We're going to get a South Carolina update coming up real quick. They're in Lexington, Kentucky tonight. A game that the Gamecocks should win. Number eight, Stanford lost to Washington today. We expect number Florida should move into the top ten next week. Second and seven. Enders incomplete. That was intended for the tight end. Let's go to the studio and an update with Matt. Hey guys, Connor Shaw saw his string of 20 straight completions snap on his first play of the game. But he completes this one to Ace Sanders, three-yard touchdown, 7-3, to three, South Carolina up on Kentucky. Meanwhile, Florida State still up by three on South Florida, and Texas pulls even with Okie State in the first. All right, Matty, thank you. Georgia's at South Carolina next week. That's going to be a good one in the SEC. A top ten matchup after Georgia's able to hold off Tennessee. Depending on what happens here tonight, maybe the SEC has two top ten matchups next week. Third and seven for the Towson Tigers. Penalty flags down. This pass is complete. Good move here by Dominic Booker. It's going to be short of the first down. There is a marker down. And the rain's starting to fall again here in Baton Rouge. Offside, number 34, defense. Oh, man. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. That is the third penalty against LSU here in the first half. This time, Micah Eugene with the infraction. Well, one of the things when you watch LSU defensively, they got a lot of young guys or more young guys in their secondary. In the middle of your screen, you see Micah Eugene on the end of the line to bring an edge pressure. Enders feels it, delivers the football, but he lines up in the neutral zone. Sometimes when you're separated from the ball, you got to look all the way down the line of scrimmage and recognize... We're not going to give them a free five yards. But certainly, we've already talked about it. Rob Ambrose, I think this is four-down territory for him yeah. again, even though he's on the minus side of the football field. He's having a great time here in Baton Rouge today. He's a big fan of Louisiana. And, hey, look, he's got every reason to be happy with what's going on so far in this ballgame. Let's the play clock wind down and calls a timeout. Townsend has one remaining. Down just four here with 9.17 to go in the half. No doubt, that's an understatement. Thank you, Matt. We look forward to it. We'll see you at the half. Joker Phillips doing what he's got to do. That team's in trouble. All right, third down and two after the timeout for Towson. From the Towson 42, here's Grant Enders. Time to throw. Fires it out. It is complete. Working hard, trying to get that first down, and doing so is Leon Kenner, the junior out of Baltimore. I got to tell you, you know, credit Towson's offensive front. They do an excellent job keeping the pocket wide enough to get the ball pretty out there pretty quickly. Towson, a pretty good job. They're doing a better job on third down, obviously, than LSU has so far in this ball game. Well, she's been blanked in third down conversion opportunities. Now, Towson, second third down conversion. Got it at the 45 yard line. The play fake, Montgomery coming into the backfield, Anthony Johnson there as well, and down goes Grant Edwards, Anthony Johnson leads LSU's D-line and tackles, he got the start tonight, here's a big play for the Tigers, they needed this. They did. LeVar Edwards is a guy that they'll put him at nose tackle, he can play just about anywhere on that defensive front, and he gets doesn't bite at all on the play fake. Anthony Johnson is there as well. He spends a lot of time in the backfield, able to clean up Enders for the sack. 
So second down and long. Enders sidesteps a tackle incomplete. Kennard couldn't haul that in. So third and 15. We've already seen a false start, a flinch earlier on a fourth down play for Towson. They're going on a silent snap. And so because of that, sometimes these defenders, they can get a cue. They can key in on that. LSU was on the receiving end of that when they were on the road versus Auburn. Edwards, I think, has keyed in on the snap count by Towson. They had an excellent jump on that yeah. previous snap. And now you'll see him here. They sink down. And they put him in a nose tackle position. That's a mismatch. That's a great athlete over an offensive center. Anders tipped. Incomplete. Oh, it should have been intercepted. Jalen Mills had it and dropped it. Boy, the true freshman who has really thrived in the Honey Badger's absence almost had his third interception here tonight. Coach Chavis, they kind of baited the blitz. And then Jalen Mills, who was up on the line of scrimmage, just hit drop back into coverage and get the initial tip. Almost able to come up with the interception off the deflection. Bounced off his own guy's head. Almost was able to come up with a big turnover. R.J. Peppers, the punt. Odell Beckham Jr. at the 22. Starts his return. Gets out of the tackle at the 30. Finds a seat to midfield and into Towson territory at the 47-yard line. Odell Beckham Jr. Maybe that will ignite this LSU offense. Well, certainly a big special teams play. Not a great special teams night. Bobbled that catch a little bit initially. But then you see it wasn't like the return was set up very well. That's just Odell Beckham doing an excellent job of getting outside of the containment and the coverage unit and look at him. There's some energy for this LSU football team. See if he can't ignite his sideline. Mettenberger four for 10 tonight. Going back to work on the ground. Spencer Ware, good run to the 36. A pickup of 13 and a first down. This is a run that they had a lot of success with versus Auburn. Look at the fullback. This is the H3 run. It looks like a pass. And then the quarterback deals it late. This plays into some of their protection schemes that LSU likes to use with their full slides. Spencer Ware had a couple of big runs versus Auburn a week ago. They like that downhill run. And with Alfred Blue out for maybe the year with that knee injury, Expect to see more Spencer Ware this year. Five-step drop. Mettenberger incomplete. There's Cadron Boone, the intended target again. Second down at 10. You know, Towson defensively, they're willing to just sell out against the run, and it's largely because there's not a lot of downfield field threat. You see anything of 15 yards or more, they haven't completed a pass all night. Most of it is usually within that 15-yard range. In fact, coming into this game, LSU was attempting passes that were even shorter than a year ago. Just over nine yards per attempt in the air. All yardage after that is yards after the catch. Hattenberger has the offensive talent. You know, the, the arm strength is penalty flags fly again. Before the snap, false start, number 70, oh, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Sophomore Lyle Collins. And that is penalty number four on LSU tonight. You know, when we were talking with Coach Miles last week, a couple of personal fouls. Obviously, those are 15 yards apiece. Well, that's a first down and a half. But when you get false starts, it's just a mental error. You're playing at home. You know, yeah, there might be some motion. Yeah, the snap count might go longer. But you got to hold your water in there. Now it's a second and 15 scenario, just forfeiting five yards. Mettenberger getting pressured again. Now being chased. Looking downfield. Hit ball comes loose. And Towson has it. They recover at the 45-yard line. Ty Smith knocked it loose. And Brighton Barr recovered it. 
again, it just miss a side up front. We've got defenders running free in their protection screen in their protection scheme. They're able to get penetration. Josh Williford is sliding. Spencer Ware doesn't get much. Mettenberger gets flushed. He does not throw well on the run. They found that out last week. Ty Smith tracks him down as he goes to release that football. And another turnover, another fumble, penalties, special teams. It's been very sloppy tonight. There's very little outside of a Russell Shepard touchdown run yep. and some defensive plays that you could really point to where the coaching staff for LSU would be pleased with this effort. Second time tonight, Towson takes over in LSU territory after an LSU turnover. Ender's time to throw. Going up top, and it's underthrown into double coverage. And no penalty flags. Alex Blake, the intended receiver. All right, here are the mistakes tonight for LSU. A couple of fumbles, a missed field goal, and three three and outs. Those aren't mistakes, but drives not materialize. Yeah, you know, not the inability to convert on third down, a concern. The penalties, a concern. The turnovers, the turnovers are the types of things that can kill a football team's ability to win a game. The penalties hurt, obviously the miscues, those hurt. But these turnovers, that's the one area that you absolutely have to address. And Towson, so far, three points off of it. Terrence West. And he's going to get one since it'll be third down and nine as Anthony Johnson quickly wraps him up. Now there's a new late night show on ESPN units, the perfect nightcap for your sports day. Host Danny Cannell, Reese Waters, and Marianella provide all the latest news with a comedic and social twist. Unite, ESPN's first late night entertainment show, Monday at midnight on ESPNU. Really uh, impressive, Rob Ambrose tried to take a shot there on first down after the turnover. Incomplete, but it gives you an idea of what Am Rob Ambrose is all about. And no fear here tonight. Look, you know, Rob Ambrose, third down is second down to him. Because oftentimes he's not scared to go for it. Both of you talking about it. We would have done it before, or not for a false start. He's a funky formation again. Enders on the draw play. First down and more. Slips a tackle to the 10, the 5, and down at the 1-yard line. <laughs> Wow, they bring four guys, blitz, they're dropping the down lineman. Enders just takes advantage of the opportunity. He's a mobile guy. And you see they're trying to drop the down lineman out. I don't know if it was a zone blitz. Regardless, Enders takes advantage of the void in the center of the defense. And once again, instead of it being a fourth down opportunity as they knock on the door, now it's first and goal from the one-yard line. LSU dodged the bullet. The Towson got there before due to a false start. Now they've got four opportunities at the end zone. 43-yard run, first down and goal. Terrence West. Touchdown, Towson. They take the lead. Third and long. And Enders makes a play with his legs. They get down there. West is a guy we talked about 29 touchdowns a year ago. But this defense, last week, they gave up some big plays, 20-plus yardage plays. Some of that was miscommunication. On this one, though, it's just a, a, a guy making a play. Enders able to get it down in the scoring position, and now Towson taking the lead over LSU. D.J. Silver missed the extra point. So the lead is two, but the lead belongs to Towson. Nine points off of two turnovers. Otherwise, it's a three-point lead regardless. Towson came down here to win the ball game, but right now they're leading the 13 in the country. All right, Matt, we'll see you in about five minutes, 15 seconds for the halftime report. It's not going to be a fun halftime. Even if LSU comes back and takes the lead going into the locker room, Les Miles can't be pleased with the way this thing is playing out here in Baton Rouge on Saturday. Nah, yeah, I'm willing to bet they're going to have to repaint the locker room after this halftime. I think there's going to be some peeling off the walls after this conversation is coming up. The kicking game for Towson tonight has been pathetic. This one kicked out of bounds by D.J. Sylvan, who just missed an extra point. And there you see Zach Mettenberger. His night has been less than impressive. The drive chart. For LSU, we're going to we're going to show you this. 
LSU fans, if, if you don't like ugly scenes, turn away. Well, you look at, I mean, the, after one big completion on the first possession, it still results in a punt. That touchdown's a one-play, quote-unquote, drive. There are no drives on this drive chart. They haven't driven the ball at all tonight. And largely, the last couple of possessions, you see punt, missed field goal, fumble, even the fumble prior to that, Kenny Hilliard puts the ball on the run. The other two, though, you've got a couple of uh, threes and three and outs, and it's all passing. All right, let's see what LSU can do here. Decent field position as they start at the 38 of LSU. Michael Ford, he's got a first down carry out across midfield. There is a flag down, however, and if this goes against LSU, Les Miles will be pulling what's left of his hair out. Well, we might see what's left underneath that hat. He'll have a reason to wear a hat. Might not have any hair after all this. Holding number 74 offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. That's the right guard, Josh Williford. They're just having difficulties all over the place. They've got difficulties. We'll see the right guard position, Josh Williford. He's going to reach out. I'll tell you what, he just takes the guy to the ground. It's unnecessary, really. Could have just stayed up. Did an excellent job, really, with the reach block. As it is, putting the offense in a hole to first and three. It's a difference of 22 yards after they mark it back with a 33-yard line. Let's go down to Allison Williams after that Michael Ford play. Well, Clay, they're certainly angry on the LSU sideline, but they're not channeling it right now. Not a lot of emotion, not a lot of energy at all here on the sideline. And the message from the coaches seems to be that they're too tentative. Right now, they just don't want it bad enough. They're telling them, you have to want it more than them on every single snap. It seems right now they just want to get to the locker room and regroup for the second half. Yeah, it looks lethargic. Absolutely right. After the one-yard pickup for Ford, second and 16. Mettenberger hit, but it's complete to Claymaw. Chase Claymaw, the tight end. Much needed big play there for LSU to the 41 of Towson. Excellent play fake, though. Good job. He takes a shot, but delivers, is able to stay in the pocket. See the defense gets sucked in. Nice adjustment, and Claymaw, a tight end. You don't see them much in this receiving game. Pickup of 27. They go to the flat to Ford out of the backfield. Hit out of bounds at their 35-yard line. That's a gain of six. There's a marker on the far side of the field. With 4-11 to go here before halftime. And this might go against Towson this time. Pick up secure. It's on the defense, we know that, but something got to call here. Illegal substitution on the defense, 12 players on the field. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot, replay first down. And we've seen LSU do this earlier in the season. You get a big play and they'll jump the ball. It makes it hard to get their substitutions. You pick up a free five yards. You can't, can't say enough about what that completion to Clay Maud did for Mettenberger's confidence, though. Biggest completion and towards the middle of the football field as opposed to just throwing towards the sideline. On first and five, there is Ware. The ball came loose again. It looks like LSU got back on it. Ware recovered his own fumble, but holy cow. If they'd turned it over there, this place would have emptied. Yeah, there wouldn't be anybody left. Well, we'd see nothing but yellow seats at that point in time. And it looks like LSU offensively is saying, look, let's just get it where we can. Lucky to get that football back. Frank Beltry gets his hand in there and strips it out. Spencer Ware is lucky to get back on the football. Would have been the third turnover here tonight. So second and two from the 33-yard line of Townsend. Pitched back to Ware. Lowers his head. He's got the first down. And Spencer Ware, you know, he was the guy until he was suspended for that Auburn game last year for a violation of team rules. He's playing now like he's got a chip on his shoulder a bit. He almost turned it over on that last play, but redeems himself by picking up the first down. He's playing now like he's healthy. I think that's part of you know, They've already had an injury, perhaps a season-ending injury. Alfred Blue, Alfred Blue earlier. And the question is, well, can they continue to reload? Spencer Ware, Jeremy Hill, and others able to do that. Play fake to Jeremy Hill. Mettenberger going to the end zone. Man wide open. Caught. Touchdown, Odell Beckham.
There's the big play the LSU Tigers were looking for, and that's got to be a sigh of relief for Zach Mettenberger. Well, he finally gets a big completion. Odell Beckham, he gets on the board. That's his first receiving touchdown of the year. And they get it in a big chunk, able to complete it downfield. Protection held up. Again, leaving seven, eight guys in there to keep their quarterback up, like give them a pocket to operate in. Beckham goes up and takes the completion for his quarterback. And Alamo with the extra points. So LSU regains the lead. Odell Beckham Jr. was expected to be one of Mettenberger's primary targets before the season coming into the night, averaging under four catches per game. Maybe this will be the start of something for him and Mettenberg. You know, really, there's, he's got one option to go with this football. He's got Odell Beckham, and that's it. Everybody else is staying in. You know, Towson, they get a couple of run looks. It's a heavy formation, two tight ends. It's a heavy play fake, and they're able to deliver the football over the top of the secondary to Odell Beckham. It's a good job getting it, getting some room for his quarterback to deliver the football. But this is this is one and done. You've got one opportunity on this pass play. You have to be able to capitalize on it, and maybe that's what this LSU offense is going to have to be. Run the football, and then when you take a shot, your wide receivers are going to have to find a way to get open because clearly from a protection standpoint, they just aren't capable right now of flooding the route tree with potential receivers. Zach Mettenberger, who many people consider to be the X factor in the national championship equation for LSU. Much needed touchdown pass on that series. Six plays, 62 yards, two minutes and 23 seconds. And the Tigers go back in front by five with 2.52 to go before halftime. As Harrison has it on the tee. Derek Joseph will take a knee, the 15th touchback on the year for James Hairston. Last year, LSU beat eight top 25 teams. They're going to see their first top 25 opponent next week at Florida, who's got a bye this week. Yeah, you know, last week, you lose a spot in the polls. Nobody liked that 12 to 10 victory overall, but the voters didn't anyway. And I think if you look at October 6th, the Florida game, Maybe that's a product of what we're seeing here tonight, looking towards that matchup in the swamp versus what's been an emergent team in the SEC East and the Florida Gators. Every team gets a bye. Sometimes teams get two buys during the course of the season. For Florida, how much of an advantage is that as they get ready for LSU? Well, I think it proved to be huge. We'll find out where on the run. You look at Towson, you've got an overloaded line of scrimmage. And it's Terrence West running to that power side. And penalty flags come down. He does not get back to the line of scrimmage as LSU was ready for it. But there is a penalty flag on the field. Illegal shift. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. It looked good, but it wasn't legal. <laughs> Could have been partly why. You look down and you think, boy, that's a rather unorthodox formation, uh, largely because it was an illegal one. But that's something that Towson will jump into, probably looking to see if the LSU was asleep at the switch. But going back to your Florida question, you know, they've got injuries. They've got some guys coming back. They're transitioning into the left tackle spot. You know, and they're also taking a look at this ball game. LSU could have, if they're handling business, put some things on film for Florida to prepare for. As it stands right now in this ball game, they got to stick with what they do best because it's highly competitive at 14 and 9. Could be 14 to 14. Second and 11. And there's pressure from behind and dumped. There is Lamar Edwards, the second time tonight he's been in that thousand backfield. They like LeVar Edwards. He's a guy that can jump in there over the left tackle position. Just great jump. Great jump on the ball. And I think it's, again, you know, that silent count. It just runs right around the offensive tackle. That's Eric Pike. It's kind of a sick feeling when a defensive end is able to tee off like that. They get a bead. We talked about it a couple of series ago. 
I think LeVar Edwards has a bead on their snap count. He's looking into the center. If you can get that one step, get that one step on offensive tackle, next thing you know, they're in the back. LSU takes a timeout. You know that they're likely to get the ball back here with plenty of time left before halftime. Some big days in college football today. None bigger than the one for quarterback Geno Smith in West Virginia. Eight touchdown passes, tying a Big 12 record. Nick Florence in a losing effort for Baylor. Six touchdowns, 581 <laughs> yards, but doesn't get the W. Well, that's unbelievable. That's just 1,200 yards of passing offense. And then Stephen Morris from Miami. It's Miami showing signs of life after getting beat down by Kansas State, battling back, beating NC State. Johnny Manziel. This is a team that LSU will see a couple of weeks from now. A freshman single car, and I like the way he can run the ball, but he's been able to deliver with the, uh, the passing game as well. Third and 19. Mingo coming in and thrown high. You know that Grant Enders felt the breath of Mingo as he was closing in, and he had to fire it out of bounds, so fourth down. You see... Marquevious Mingo, sometimes they just give him a green light. You see all that attention? You've got three guys in and around number 49. He's still able to penetrate. This is a penetrating kind of defense. This is what they force. They force third and longs. The average third down against this defense is eight and a half yards. That's giving your defensive coordinator a lot to work with. Shanked punt by R.J. Peppers out of bounds at around the 22-yard line. The kicking game for Towson has really hurt them here in the first half. Look at Coach Ambrose, just disgusted, really. They're recognizing it's not an ideal field position situation. The big sack puts him back in a hole. He was just saying, what happened right there? That's one, of the, that's one of the worst questions you can get as a player, too, especially after a bad play. Hey, what happened? It's pretty simple, Coach. I kicked it off the side of my foot, and I knew it as soon as I hit it. You got a feel for him, though. He's a true freshman, and in an environment like this, you know, which he's never seen before, he's playing high school football a year ago. It's a lot to ask for a young man. And now LSU with great field position, first down and ten, 22-yard line. It's Kenny Hillier who fumbled here in the first half. Of the LSU giving up three points, and Hilliard. Averaging 7.3 yards per carry coming into the night. But the entire LSU offense has been pretty quiet. Hilliard again gets it to the 10. First down. Both those runs, talk about LSU doing what it takes. They want to secure a victory, get an opportunity off the turnover. The two runs you've had the most success with tonight were the two runs we just saw, a lead draw. And then they pop the left guard. They've already scored a touchdown with that play. Hilliard jumping up. Get over the line. Gets it to the 10, maybe the 9-yard line. Telvon Clark brings him down. Kenny Hilliard, leading rusher at 86 yards per game as a team-high six touchdowns. And another LSU timeout with a minute 34 to go here before halftime. Because Oregon jumped LSU in the polls, how much has the likelihood of a repeat national championship game been affected? Well, you know, they're still in striking distance. But to me, I think as long as you've got, you know, look out in the Pac-12, you've got an undefeated Oregon football team. And USC clearly looks susceptible. Stanford went down. Perhaps they aren't as strong as maybe we thought they were with their victory over USC. So Oregon, if they run the table, well, they're right there. Then you've got FSU. Yeah that they've cleared probably what was perceived to be their biggest hurdle versus Clemson, and they did it decisively a week ago. So I think it's, you've certainly got two opportunities, I think, one out of the ACC and one out of the Pac-12 for a team other than an SEC team to represent. The ESPN College Football, available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device via watchespn.com. These teams we were just talking about. Go to your Watch ESPN app. Check them out. Mettenberger to the end zone. Incomplete. That's Clay Ma, the tight end, who is trying to hit in the corner of the end zone. Well covered by Ty Smith and Jordan Dangerfield, an All-American free safety for Towson. Clock stops with a minute 28 to go in the half. And a third and eight coming up. They can actually pick up the first down at the one-yard line. They may want to do that. Obviously, they're going to take a shot, I think, for the end zone. See if they can't get the points. 
You can chalk that up as a victory for Towson after a shank punt and they can hold LSU to a field goal. LSU 0 for 5 tonight in third down situation. The throw to the flat. Jeremy Hill stiff arm to the 5 and no further. Fourth down. Ty Smith making another play for the Towson Tigers. We'll make it 0 for 6 on the night, and they're going to send in a field goal unit, get the points. You know, you wouldn't think that they would be precious in this ball game coming in, but you you certainly can't afford to go for it on fourth down, and if for whatever reason you don't convert, just the feeling going into halftime. And let's yeah. remember, too, there's a minute 20 to play in this half. You get the three points. Unless you had not gone for it on fourth down all season long, they're not going to do it here. Alamon missing from 51 earlier. Hits here from 23. He's the mad hatter, but he's not that mad. Doesn't go for it on fourth and fairly long here in this situation. He hasn't gone for it on fourth down at all this year. Yeah, and, and you know, to me, when you look back at last week's film, and, and we actually talked about this with Coach Miles, do you trust your passing game? Do you think you can get it done? He talks about, you know, he thinks Mettenberger's got those skills. He knows that it's just a matter of time. And yet last week, I think it was very apparent. Five third down situations, three yards is not a small distance to go, especially versus, you know, an SEC caliber defense, even an Auburn defense that hasn't been what they typically would want. And they weren't able to convert because they're keeping the ball on the ground. Eight and nine man boxes begging LSU to throw yeah. the football in those situations. LSU wouldn't do it. And, and I think what we've seen tonight is that there hasn't been a lot of reason to trust this passing offense. We've seen a couple of big completions. You know, the big one to Odell Beckham on a one-man route and a two-tight, heavy run formation set. You catch a secondary sleeping. But otherwise, there's been very little consistency in the passing game, unlike what LSU was able to get going versus Auburn. Eight of their first nine attempts they complete. That hasn't been the case tonight. It's been disjointed really from the get-go. All right, whose fault is it, though? You know, I think it's I think it's been pretty collective. You know, and it's I don't think that that's just let's spread it around because you don't want to put just on the shoulders of your first year starter quarterback in Zach Mettenberg. Protection has broken down. We've seen a couple of drops. There were a couple of drops last week. There have been some balls that haven't been thrown very well. Obviously, ball security. The unfortunate part is you could spread the blame all over the place right now offensively. Short kick for James Hairston, Derek Joseph on the return for Towson. And he's buried at the 18-yard line. And 13 to go here before halftime. Towson's offense coming back up. That's a one-possession game. LSU, the number three team in the FBS, taking on the number 12 team in the FCS tonight. On paper, this should have been a rout. And the first half filled with mistakes for the LSU Tigers. I mean, look at these numbers, 0 for 6 on third down, turnovers 2 already, could have been 3 if Spencer Ware doesn't get a lucky bounce. You know, this game right now, it could easily be a 3-point ball game. Towson you know, held to a field goal due to a false start. Otherwise, it could be 19-14, uh, 17-14 right now. Anders quickly gets rid of it. Get away from a tackler is Shepard. And he'll get four, second down and six. Clock running, just over a minute to go in the half. This is the second FBS opponent that Towson has had this year. Lost to Kent State in the opener. Played Maryland tough last year on the road. Almost beat Maryland. Well, I should have beaten Maryland when you look at it last year. The turnovers, that's what's been the difference for this football team. Fired to the outside. That should have been caught by the usually consistent consistently good senior receiver Tom Ryan. So now third and five. But it's pretty obvious that Rob Ambrose's team here tonight came in here ready to play and they haven't been intimidated. No, they haven't. I mean, early on in the ball game, offense clearly still getting acclimated to the stage, maybe the pace of play. But they've taken advantage of the opportunities they've been presented with. Well, other than that false start, really, they've been able to capitalize on what LSU's given them. I think they've also taken advantage of the weather because the weather has kept a lot of the fans away here tonight. It hasn't been as intimidating as it usually is in Death Valley on a Saturday night. Play fake. Enders gets rid of it. Well covered by Eric Reed. Spencer Wilkins calling for the flag, and he gets him. Two flags down on the field. Looks like pass interference. 
Okay, from both sidelines. A little bit of hesitation. They came in kind of late, had to lobby for it. Spencer Wilkins getting what he wants. Maybe he's pre law at Towson. That was very <laughs> persuasive. Pass interference, number one, defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of foul. Eric Reed, the leader of that LSU secondary. Yeah, yeah. yeah that got there a little early. I think it's his right arm. Coach knows it. Coach is begging for it, and he got it. Thank you. He's grateful for it. Extends the drive, keeps it alive. Towson has one timeout remaining. 38 seconds to go in the half. Enders now flushed out of the pocket. Looking downfield. And throws it away. Deion Jones was all over. And the clock stops with 30 seconds to go. Barquise Mingo was the one, though, that gets Enders off of his spot, flushes him out of the pocket. Deion Jones, they like the speed that Deion Jones has, able to get sideline to sideline from his linebacker position. One of those true freshman linebackers that LSU is so high on. You see him coming, too. The speed that he's able to close with when you bring pressure. He doesn't always have to get home right away. Sometimes you've got to track down the passer. Second and ten from the 30-yard line. And not getting back to the line of scrimmage. Sterling Viper. And clock continues to move here. And now we get a whistle. And Les Miles has called the timeout. LSU is out of them now for the half. Les Miles, 58-year-old father of four, national coach of the year last year, expecting that his offense, how it might change for the better, especially the passing game. Uh, you couldn't contain his excitement at the beginning of the year, but it's apparent that there are some issues with this offensive unit. Not as bad as what Arkansas is going through, but definitely some offensive issues. Absolutely. I and mean, then you look over his history here at LSU, he's brought a great deal of stability more than anything else. It was Jerry DiNardo for five years, Nick Saban for five years. That was the longest tenure since Coach McClendon was down. It's one of those things where you think uh, that you would have some long tenured coaches. Not the case. Les Miles gets here, LSU, and has established a level of excellence over the course of eight seasons. But he's got his work cut out for him, I think, with this squad, regardless of his aspirations coming in. Quest for the Coach's Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Let's see if it's the final play of the half. Pfeiffer, good run. And that is going to do it here for the first half. Towson has to feel very good about their first half effort. Now, LSU did them a lot of favors with some mistakes. A couple of big turnovers. It's a one-possession game at the half. I think a lot of people would have been surprised if you told them that was going to be the scenario at halftime here in Baton Rouge. Yeah, you know, LSU goes into halftime with the lead, but you look at the numbers for Mettenberger, this is not what they wanted out of the first half. Let's go down to Allison, who's with the last miles. Coach, up by just eight at the half. What's the message to your team? Just do the things that we came here to do. Let's not, uh, let's not be sloppy. Let's not put the ball on the ground. Defense is playing very well, minus two or three plays. Offense got to continue drives. Why haven't they been able to continue drives? Where are they not clicking? Well, we're not, we're not throwing the ball just perfectly. But, uh, you know, that's, to me, when they, when they load the box, we got to throw the football well. All right, thanks, Coach. See you. 17-9 at the half, LSU leading their FBS record of non-conference regular season wins at 40. Trying to get that to 41 here tonight, but it hasn't been pretty. Let's go to the studio, Matt, Tom. Back to the SEC on ESPN. Zach Mettenberger showed up to the stadium tonight dressed as Ron Burgundy, but there's nothing funny about that first half for LSU. Pretty ugly at times. 17-9. They have the lead over Towson. 
but uh, not pretty. Welcome back. Alongside Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Maffick. They were supposed to clean things up, as Les Miles put it this week. Well, they haven't done it so far. Pretty uninspiring. Uh, hasn't been the case tonight. You know, they come out of the Auburn game, had some difficulties on third down, difficulties with penalties, difficulties with turnovers, big plays. We've seen all of that for LSU here tonight. And unfortunately, when you look at them offensively, clearly completely out of sync from a passing standpoint. They've still, and quite frankly, from a running the ball, when you look at what they've been able to do tonight, outside of the big touchdown run by Russell Shepard, who is at best a changeup in their run game, 17 attempts for 38 yards on the ground. They clearly were looking to get the passing game established. A couple of series that led to threes and out, three and outs, back to back, were nothing but passes. Really, all the goals that LSU had coming into this game for the first half, none of them were accomplished. They've got two more quarters and you know, an eight-point lead to work with, to try to work at it. And a Towson team that came in here talking about victory that certainly believes that that's within reach versus you know, a number three team in the country from an FBS. Well, we expect that Les Miles had some stern words for his Bayou Bengals at halftime. James Harrison, a short kick, fielded at the five by Derek Joseph. Taking up that far sideline and gets punished. Short of the 25. The LSU offense tonight. Mettenberger, 8 of 16, 91 yards. The team had a couple of fumbles. One time, Mettenberger was stripped. They are 0 for 6 on third down conversion attempts. Just a couple of near misses, too. That was a near turnover. This was an actual fumble that was lost. And protection's been an issue. Josh Williford at right guard. They're sifting all the way out to corner pressure, but letting a defensive lineman cross his face. Flushes Zach Mettenberger, and he ultimately gets the ball stripped, something that they saw last week. He wasn't able to deliver the ball on time in a three-step timing, and it cost him here again this week versus Towson. Towson starts with the football here in the second half. 110 yards of offense in the first. Enders throwing across his body, complete to Tom Ryan, the senior receiver. That's a pickup of 21 yards on the first play of the second half. Second time tonight where we've seen Coach Ambrose you know, dial up one of these unorthodox setups where you move your offensive lineman, you shift a tackle to the opposite side of the formation. It's just something else for the defense to have to address. A confused defense plays slower. Certainly have to do that versus an LSU team that's fast off these cleats. It's the longest pass play of the night for Towson so far. First down from the 46, Terrence West on the run, still on his feet. He's got a first down, turning inside the 40-yard line. Finally, the whistle stops the play, but it's not because somebody brought him down. We saw Terrence that West. in the first half. You know, the second and third effort. And Terrence West, again, penetration upfield. LSU, and you see just kind of a shoulder tackle by Therald Simon. you got to wrap a guy up. That gave up another five or six yards. This is one of the best rush defenses in the country. You see third, third best in the FBS, only 56 yards a game. And tonight, leaking some yards on the ground. That's a 15-yard run for West. They stay with him. Tries to get to the outside, can't do it. That's going to be a one-yard pickup. Therald Simon credited with the tackle there. You know, John Chavis, he only got five starters back. And when we were talking with the LSU defensive coordinator this week, the guy they affectionately know around here is Chief likes his young talent and you know they're still working on some things especially in situational defenses but that that uh, base concept really happy with what he's seen and he's been real comfortable with the three linebacker looks their base defenses it's the pressure packages that they haven't gotten to yet on second and ten intended for aaron banks incomplete so third down and long for townsend on their first series here the second half Boy, John Chavis has been around the block. I mean, he was a longtime defensive coordinator at Tennessee, and now here at LSU in his fourth season. 
And, you know, he always is going to get good talent at a place like LSU, but it's what he does with it to put him over the top. You, you can tell by the guys he's putting in the NFL how good he is at his job. Well, he dating back to his years, you know, even as a player at Tennessee, put together some tremendous defenses, won a national championship in 98. He came over to LSU and ever since been a much more defensive-minded football team with him at the helm. And maybe some movement by the Towson O-line. Ball start, number 57, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. That's the guard, Charles Johnson, and that will definitely help the LSU defense is caused to try and get off the field here on third down. You know, when you look back at what John Chavis meant, when Bo Pelini goes to be the head coach at Nebraska off of that national championship year. They had co-defensive coordinators for a season. And then they were able to snatch up one of the best defensive minds of Royals Award winners, one of the top assistant coaches in the game. And John Chavis has built great defenses here in Baton Rouge. Andrews got the keeper and get a few of those yards back. And stopped at the 36. Won the Broyles Award last year, did the Chief. Fourth in total defense last year, second the year before. He's got the eye of the Tigers. I mean, that's an intense looking cat. Can you imagine him in a defensive funnel at practice? His players love him. His players play hard for him. He's done a good job this year adapting his personnel. Obviously, no Tyron Matthew available. That's part of the reason why we talk about some of this base personnel. Because they're not comfortable just yet with some of the pressure packages with their nickel person. A 53-yard attempt for D.J. Silva. He's got a long of 30 this year. He made one for 26 earlier. Just short. Good effort by D.J. Silva, the junior kicker out of Western Florida. So LSU will get it back with a decent field position. All right, the LSU offense. What do they have to do now to get on track? The biggest thing is just get first downs. You've got to convert some of these third down situations. You are 0 for, 0 for the night on third down. And really, we talk about the first two drives versus Auburn, and ever since then, they've converted two third downs. That was in the Auburn game. They've done none tonight. you just got to maintain the series, move the ball. Michael Ford in the backfield on first down. They'll give it to him. Looking for him on the right side. He's hit, gets away, steps up, first down and more. Tripped up at the 45-yard line by Jordan Dangerfield. Otherwise, he may have been off to the races. You know, Coach, uh, Coach Miles talked about when you stack the box, we got to be able to throw it. Well, Michael Ford is able to get a juke right there on the edge and get back out. If it wasn't for Dangerfield, the shoe shoestring tackle, he's off to the races. He did it last week versus uh, Corey Lamier, the defensive end. He's got some moves. That's a nine-man box, though, that they were running against, able to get big yardage. 21-yard run. Second longest run of the night for LSU. Mettenberger back to the air. Here's Odell Beckham, Jr., first down at the 30-yard line. Allison. Play, Matt, head coach Rob Ambrose for Towson, agreed with what you guys said about how they were able to disrupt the LSU passing game. They did it by getting pressure on Zach Mettenberger, something they had not really done this year. Now, when Towson has the ball, the key is for them to start moving the ball more consistently. They can do that by mixing up their personnel like they have for much of the first half. And the big thing, guys, though, he said when they're able to do that, it slows down this very fast LSU defense. Yeah, they're hanging right in there. Now, Mettenberger. We'll give it to Ford again, slips through a crease and inside the 20. All right, LSU back in the red zone here at the 18-yard line, and this is where there have been some issues developing the LSU Tigers offense. Yeah, red zone, I mean, they've got more attempts coming into this game than just about anybody else in the SEC. 21 shots at the end zone from the 20 and in, but they're only capitalizing on about 57% of them for touchdowns. Even tonight, they're one for one but it was for a field goal. It's when you get down in this area, fumbles undid their efforts last week, where you've got to get six points. Four. Cuts it up. Ball comes loose. Towson says they have it. Yes. The Towson Tigers recovering another LSU fumble. 
and mark it down once again. We talk about the inability to punch the football into the end zone in scoring position. It happened on the goal line virtually last week, and now Michael Ford coughing it up and turning the ball over and forfeiting a scoring opportunity. ESPNU College Football Prime Time is brought to you by Tostitos. Tostitos knows how to party. A lot of pride here on the LSU campus when it comes to the football team, but these LSU Tigers fans tonight having a hard time with what they're seeing. Another turnover, fourth of the year in the red zone for the Bayou Bengals. Frank Beltre with the recovery. Telvon Clark stripped it as Michael Ford coughs it up for LSU. Frank Beltre's had a night tonight, hadn't he? He's done yeah. a good job of getting some pressure. Gets on that big fumble. He's expected to be an FCS All-American this year. And the he's playing tonight, let's see why. Townsend going back to work on offense. They've got a long field ahead at the 10. Shepard is quickly wrapped up. It's going to be a three-yard pickup, a three-yard loss, excuse me, as Benny Logan is there. Sam Montgomery in on the play, too, for LSU. Dialing up the pressure a little bit. There's some edge pressure. You see John Chavis, we talked about him earlier. Not going to sit back. They've got Towson pinned back, and obviously off a turnover. They want to make sure that they can maintain a field position opportunity the way Towson has punted tonight. If they're able to stymie this offense, they can get their, their own offense, the LSU offense, the ball back within scoring di uh, distance and certainly on the plus side of the field. Play clock inside of five seconds. Enders, play fake. They pick up the pressure. Now Enders in trouble. Somehow got away from Anthony Johnson and got it out of bounds. Third down and long. Boy, Anthony Johnson was very close to sacking Enders, but he got rid of it. Well, again, Edwards as well gets upfield. Anthony Johnson gets the flush inside out. We talk about this as a penetrating type of defense. The Enders, they want to deliver the football quickly. Certainly don't want him flush it running around outside the pocket. Certainly mobile. That's not their best opportunity offensively. Third and eight or more. They're one of seven tonight. Third and 12. Enders on the run. Looking downfield. Throws. Penalty flags down. And it was complete. There are markers down. Let's see if this uh, stands up. Right about the 33 yard line is where the pass was hauled in. Illegal touching. Number 10, offense, went out of bounds voluntarily, yeah. came back in, and was the first to touch the pass. That's Spencer Penalties Wilkins. Also down at the previous spot. Fourth down. And he's out of bounds right there. The sophomore receiver then came back in and made the catch, but. It's illegal touching on Townsend. Good job by Wilkins keeping the play alive, at least trying. He didn't turn it up in time. He sees your quarterback scrambling around, and we've seen this a lot this season. The quarterback's able to keep plays alive, stresses the secondary, even with a talent like a Therald Simon. We talked to Coach Ambrose for Towson. He said one of the guys, we could take a guy, Brad Wing as the punter, and the other would be Therald Simon if he could build a cornerback. It would look like Simon. And as a quarterback scrambles around, it can stress a secondary even with that type of time. RJ Peppers one shank tonight. This is a better kick, but it's going to go out of bounds. And it's going to be LSU's ball at the 50 yard line. Ball security tonight an issue. Four fumbles, they've lost three. Two fumbles at the cornerback position last week. You get one fumble on a strip after Bentberg is flushed. Then another fumble for Michael Ford. You've got two at your tailback position. They've got to secure the football. We talked about it enough. It's, it'll kill your football team. It's killing the LSU Tigers. They actually spotted it more favorably for LSU at the 45 of Towson. That's where they say that punt went out of bounds. Hilliard. In the backfield behind J.C. Copeland. Passing here is Mettenberg. Running out of time, out of the pocket. Now he's just going to throw it away. Just nothing open downfield, and Mettenberg are not getting any time, and there's a penalty flag now. 
Uh, either a hold or a grounding penalty, they're saying. Uh, you know, to me, they cleared the line of scrimmage. Got Beckham in the window. Miles is Good upset. Grounding. Number eight, yep. offense. It was inside the tackle box. Threw the ball, but there was no eligible receiver. Penalties lost him down at the spot of the foul. Second down. Uh, it's a two-man pattern again. They're leaving eight in to protect. It looks to me like as he's flushed around, you see the po pocket collapsing around him. He flushes backwards, and you see Odell Beckham at the top of your screen. I don't know. I don't know how that's intentional grounding when you've got a receiver in proximity. Hmm. That's a, I don't see that one. That's a questionable call at best. Regardless, when you leave eight men in the protection scheme, you should have more time. Obviously, the two-man route, if it's covered initially, that never had to try to buy time. It cost him a down and a yardage. Second and 21, they go to Hilliard in the flat. And he gets back close to the original line of scrimmage as we go down to Allison. Clay, I think it was a bit surprising. Ellis, who kind of has come out of the half a bit flat, I thought for sure they would be more re-energized than they are. But no surprise, running back coach Frank Wilson preaching ball security after the Michael Ford fumble, reminding his guys, you have to secure the ball. Tuck it into your body. Use two hands. Two hands. It is non-negotiable, guys. It is one of the most basic principles of running the ball. But sometimes even guys at the college level need to be reminded yeah. of it. They've got a great stable of backs, even with the loss of Alfred Blue, but all three running backs have fumbled tonight. Mettenberger is sacked from behind at the 45 by Ty Smith coming off the corner blitz. They open the season versus North Texas. And Zach Mettenberger's awareness of corner pressure has to improve, and he has to recognize that you know, ultimately you've got to check your six sometimes. You'll see. Ty Smith, the bottom of your screen, he's covering the bottom receiver. And he's just going to come on a corner blitz. There's an opportunity to deliver the football quickly. There's outlets available. Zat Mettenberger had no idea that the pressure was coming. Good job by Towson with the disguise. you got to have a clock in your head. You also have to have eyes in the back of your head. Muffed punt. Recovered by LSU at the eight-yard line. Love coughed it up, and LSU there to recover as Jarvis Landry gets on it for the Tigers. The special team started out shaky tonight. The punting game period for Towson has been a nightmare. Love just takes his eye off of it. Michael Eugene right there to keep him away from the ball. Deion Jones able to get down there. Looks like he was the final guy to get the recovery. Here's a red zone opportunity. Yet again, last time they were down inside the 20. Fumble by Michael Ford. This is an opportunity for them to punch it in. First down and goal for LSU. That's the second turnover for Towson tonight. Here's Kenny Hilliard. Bangs his way inside the five. Down to about the three-yard line. Beltray makes the tackle. One missed field goal and a couple of turnovers now for Towson. Now those mistakes likely either tied or have the lead. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it during the first half. There's never an opportune penalty, but certainly one when you're knocking on the door. And now you've given an LSU offense that has struggled all night an incredibly short field. One for two in the red zone tonight. Including a turnover, Hilliard to the goal line. Doesn't look like he got in, no ball signal yet out. anyways. Now they say the ball came loose, but appears the officials are going to rule Hilliard down at the one. That ball comes out. That ball came out on that one. You know, how LSU is able to maintain possession. We talked about Spencer Ware dropped the ball earlier. They're running into the meat of the defense. That oh, ball man. is out, and once again, LSU, they dodged this bullet, but ball security has just been incredibly poor, almost forfeiting another chance at the red zone. Claymont recovered it. They go to the fullback, J.C. Copeland, and he got in. Touchdown, LSU. And they can bank their lucky stars. They got it. Now, let's keep in mind, 
how they even got the ball where they got it. Buff punt. J.C. Copeland, 280 pounds. I tell you what, I'm not so sure that ball ever crossed the goal line, but as it stands, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't review it. They're going to go ahead and try to get this extra point off. Well, she's lucky to maintain possession of the ball. And here comes the whistle. Yeah. For an official review upstairs. The ruling on the field of a touchdown is under further review. So Rocky Good is going to take a closer look at this upstairs. The SEC replay official tonight. And it's worth a, another look. J.C. Copeland, big guy, but he got stacked up, and it's where the ball is. You see there, it might have eked over. It might have eked yeah. over right at the initial push. It's ruled a touchdown on the field. you got to have indisputable evidence that it would not be to reverse what was called on the field of play. It's going to stay a touchdown, I believe. Just because it's so hard to tell for sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's ultimately it has to be indisputable. And to me, yeah, he's in the end zone. He breaks the front edge of the plane. That's all it's got to be. Rob Ambrose called J.C. Copeland LSU's best football player. He was so impressed when he watched the tape of Copeland this week. Here's the call from Mark Curls. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. They actually confirmed it. That means uh, they saw the ball cross the plane. It looked like it did initially, but to me, it's, it was at least worth the review. Sometimes we talk about these reviews and it stops the pace of play. It was close enough, I think, to worth a second look. If you're LSU, that's a sigh of relief. No doubt. That was not an offensive drive, but once again, we're finally able to punch it in there for six points in the red zone. Alamo with the extra point. Hilliard fumbled it at the one. Claymont recovered it, and then Copeland scores the touchdown. You're right, they were lucky. It's starting special teams, a buffed punt, you get the recovery, and then they get an opportunity at the end zone. Hilliard puts it on the ground, they get it back. J.C. Copeland, big fullbacks, able to barely get it over the goal line for the score. You're watching college football on ESPN. Presented by Five Hour Energy. Alongside Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Clay Mapping. Back here at Baton Rouge, Allison Williams down on the sideline. Here's the scoring by quarter. It's been a tough night for LSU's offense. They've got 24 points on the board. They've scored three touchdowns, but two have been gifts. Yeah, one off a shank punt, and then they hit Odell Beckham on a big play, and then now a muffed punt on the return game in the short field. Still almost fumbled that opportunity again. Derek Joseph takes the knee. Towson will start at the 25-yard line. So Towson's offense, you know, really hasn't been all that impressive. But considering the circumstances that they're under, playing in a tough environment, they've moved the ball at times. They've taken advantage of their opportunities that they've been given. And they are still in this football game. Yeah, you know, they've hit a couple of plus yardage plays, a couple of 15 plus yardage plays. You know, they were given a gift early. They capitalized off the turnover. Their points have come off largely the turnovers that LSU has gifted them, quote unquote. You know, the, the touchdown off a of fumble. And really, it should be 14 to nothing, were it not for a penalty as they got down on the one yard line. But they have not been able to march against this defense. A tough night passing. Enders 7 of 23 for 44 yards. Go back to their. Workhorse Terrence West. Now, Terrence West, 29 touchdowns last year, which led the FCS, and he only started one game last year. Pretty impressive. Yeah, they like what they have in him. And really tonight, coming into it, Coach Ambrose says, somehow we got to find a way to run the football. And they haven't been able to do that consistently, and nor should they if this defense is as good as their stats show from LSU. Uh, and at the same time, they've certainly been opportunistic uh, when given a shorter field and once they get into scoring position. That's the one yard loss, second and 11. West again. Bounces off a tackle, gets away, and getting close to the first town before Barkevius Mingo escorts him out of bounds. Great effort here by Terrence West, the sophomore out of Baltimore. Seen that a couple of times tonight. Great job 
the top of the screen. They come all the way down for Eric Reed, who's coming in for run support. Wide receivers getting into action a little bit. West has shown that uh, he's not easy to get on the ground. This is the kind of guy that they think they can grow their offense around. At third and one, and again, Bob Ambrose. In this situation, we've got a couple of touchdowns. Maybe it is four down territory again for Rock. Rolling out to the right. Feeling some pressure, getting rid of it as Enders, but it's incomplete. And now fourth down. We'll see what Ambrose does. That pass incomplete, intended for Cronager. You know, considering the past couple of punts they've got, they got one decent punt off this half. I'm not so sure fourth down isn't your best yeah. opportunity. In fact, that's kind of what got him rolling when it came to going for it on fourth down was right. we didn't have a strong kicking game, so he said, forget it. I'm not going to try to kick the field goal and punt away. Just get a shot at fourth and one. He'll keep the offense out there. Terrence West in the backfield. Full house backfield. Fourth and one. West gets a block, got the first down. They'll keep the drive alive. Boy, that's gutsy. An FCS team in Baton Rouge going for it on fourth down, pretty deep in their own territory, and they pick it up. It looked like it was going to get stacked up in the backfield. Sam Montgomery does a good job getting upfield. Lamine Barrow, but it's Daryl Simon and Eric Reed unable to get it done in run support out there on the edge. West able to get that one yard and maintain possession, and the gamble works. Rob Ambrose, before Towson, was Randy Edsel's offensive coordinator at UConn. Pretty good resume. Likes what he has at Towson. On first down, it's complete. Aaron Banks the catch. That's a gain of three. Let's go down to Allison Williams. You mentioned it's a gutsy call by Coach Ambrose to go for it on fourth down there. The players obviously love that about their coach. In fact, over here on the Towson sideline, even their punter was yelling for them to go for it. Guys. Last year, they went for it on fourth down 25 times. That's a lot. I mean, and, but it changes the way you play defense against an offense like that. It's just almost reckless, if you will, with the first three downs because you know that you still got another crack at the first. That third down might not be to get to the sticks. Banks got a better spot, so it's second and four. Inside handoff to Dominique Booker, nothing there. It's going to be a loss of three. Third down and long. There's a new late night show on ESPN Units, the perfect nightcap for your sports day. Host Danny Cannell, Reese Waters, and Marianella. Comedy, a social twist. It's a kind of sports theme. You're going to like it. Unite on ESPN U Monday at midnight. Good buddy Danny Cannell. A great job. His first uh, role like that, I'm sure, in his career. I'm convinced he's done a little comedy on the side. <laughs> and a big third down again. We talk yep. about the scenario. You know, maybe they're just trying to eat some yards for another fourth down attempt. They've converted three tonight. And incomplete. So now fourth down. The last two downs. John Chavis dialing up the edge pressure. Craig Lawson on the previous play and run support. This time, Jalen Mills comes from his slot position. These are the kind of pressure concepts that we saw more of when uh, Tyron Matthew was available. Not so much. And so this is what they're growing into. Maybe because of the score, it gives him a little bit more of an opportunity to show some more things on the field. A lot of football yet to play in this ball game, but you see some of that edge pressure and some of the slot pressure packages ratcheting up. R.J. Peppers gets rid of it. Boy, they are not taking any chances. He has kicked it out of bounds at least three times to I don't want to risk a Beckham return. Bettenberger coming back out with 2.23 to go in the fourth. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. A 24-9 lead for LSU late here in the third quarter. And the last 10 points scored by LSU have been gifts from the Townsend Tigers. There we look at Towson, a shank punt. Excellent field position. I mean, the directional kicking now. That one was not intentional. And then a muff punt return. Gives LSU an offensive opportunity to finally get it in the end zone. They recovered a fumble prior to this play, but J.C. Copeland barely getting over the goal line. 
Ford. Yard and two. Brighton Barr, the tackle as LSU goes to work here offensively. And the offense led by Zach Mettenberger, who is 10 of 18 for 114 yards tonight. Getting him on track, one of the goals that Les Miles talked about this week. And now he stumbles to the backfield and goes down. I was just about ready to say that Les Miles, when he goes back and looks at this tape, and looking for signs that Zach Mettenberger is starting to get it, can't find a lot of stuff that he's going to be happy about. You, you know, you look at him, and we, we talk about a corner blitz on a previous possession. He just steps on his own feet. I mean, it's, it's, it's been kind of like that tonight. There's that net burger quarterback for this offense in general. They've moved a couple of guys around. Alexander at right tackle, Hurst at left tackle. You know, unaware of corner blitzes, protection breakdowns. The play clock's running down. Yeah, it's now. already it's under just, five, and he has to call a timeout. It's just, it's just completely out of sync offensively. And, and uh. frankly, you know, even the run game, has not been impressive tonight. And once they get something going and they get a fumble, you know, Michael Ford coughs it up. If it wasn't for short field position this entire half, you know, offensively, I, I'm not so sure. You look at LSU, you thought at least was a run-oriented offense tonight. You know, maybe because they were trying to get the passing game going, they were able, able to get the rushing game going. But you see there, 21 rushing yards in the second half. You know, keep in mind, 116 yards in the first half. 78 of that was by Russell Shepard on one play. Right. This offense has not been methodical. They have not been able to march the football. They have not been able to move the football. And, and even with the short football field, has struggled to take advantage of those opportunities. They can barely get out of their own way here tonight. Ben Berger steps on his own feet. I think that's... It's probably a pretty good metaphor for what this offense has looked like so far. And they've converted once tonight on third down. One of eight, and they've got a third and 14 here. Mettenberger, plenty of time. Throws. Good play there, first down. Complete to Cajun Boone. So they'll keep the drive alive as Boone goes out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Nice run under a minute to go here in the quarter. Three wide receivers set. In fact, that's probably their best completion set. Really, seventy percent of their passes out of that set are completed. Unfortunately, because of their protection issues, it's not often that they can get three receivers out there. They're able to at least keep Mettenberger upright long enough to get the ball downfield. See if that doesn't ignite some type of offensive rhythm. Ford behind Mettenberger. Pass. Nice catch by Russell Shepard. Snags it out of the air. That's going to be a nine-yard pickup, second down and short. As we've got 31 seconds to go before the end of the quarter. You know, Mettenberger seems most comfortable, I think, throwing towards the perimeter, towards these sidelines. You know, coverage is simple, fewer bodies. We have not seen a lot where they're able to take advantage of the middle part of the passing, of the passing opportunity. Maybe some movement on that LSU line. Start, number 78, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. True freshman tackle, Vidal Alexander. We talked about it. They're shuffling some guys around. Josh Dorosic, six-year guy, is a guard. He starts at left tackle last week. He gave up some sacks, a strip fumble. He's still having to move some guys around. Penalties, though. The thing continues. First fall loss for the year with that knee injury, and it's had ripple effects for this offense. Wide open is Shepard, underthrown by Mettenberger. And that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. It's been that kind of night for Zach Mettenberger and the LSU Tigers. Took a big completion even to get to this first down, <laughs> to this set of downs. Into the third quarter. Yep, no flag. That's going to do it. Ben Berger's been off target. He's given up a fumble. He's been hurried quite a bit tonight. A difficulty connecting with the receivers. Tough time. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. Keep it classy, Baton Rouge. 
Um, remember Zach Mittenberger showed up to the stadium tonight dressed as Ron Burgundy. I think he and the rest of the team, looking past Towson tonight, felt that this was going to be a cakewalk. It has been anything but. Third down and six from the LSU 47. Play fake, Mettenberg looking downfield. Deep pass, man wide open, caught! Touchdown, Odell Beckham! Thomas Bradley beaten downfield by Odell Beckham, his second touchdown of the night. Odell Beckham coming into this game, no receiving touchdowns, two catches for scores tonight. Earlier, there was only one receiver available when he went into the end zone. This time, other opportunities. Mettenberger has time, sets his feet, and delivered a strike. He actually put the ball where he wanted to that time. Hasn't been the case most of tonight. Alamont's extra point is good. First play of the fourth quarter results in a touchdown. Pass from Zach Mettenberger to Odell Beckham. Top of the screen, Odell Beckham out wide. This is snap, Zach, Met Zach Mettenberger. You know, Russell Shepard was in the backfield with him. He could have swung it out to him for a shorter game. He saw that Beckham's able to get behind the coverage again. Outrun the safety over the top. Love just checks him and lets him go. Goes right by Thomas Bradley. Mettenberger, he's going to celebrate. But more than anything else, I think that's relief. Got to work on the celebration, even. Even that, even that not going well tonight. Well, I think he'll take it. Yes. Uh, obviously, they're going to take it. He's passing offense. And clearly, the intent coming in was to get it going. They wanted to get it established. It hasn't been the case all night. There have been big plays that have helped this offense along. That in short fields due to some special teams miscues by Towson. But now, you know, the score is going to reflect ultimately 31-9. It's a 22-point game. Towson offensively, it's not as if this game is hanging in the balance. And at the same time, LSU, outside of securing victory through three quarters, they really haven't accomplished any of their goals that they set out coming into this game. And now, I think it's going to take a fourth quarter. You're going to see starters staying in the ball game yep. that they otherwise would have been resting. Remember, next week, Florida, they're coming off a bye week. They're watching this ball game. LSU's not going to get an opportunity to rest guys in this game. They're going to want to keep guys out there and see if they can't you know, get something going offensively. That drive still you know, was really hinged on yet another big play. And that game is in Gainesville next week. This is returnable for Derek Joseph from inside the five-yard line. Goes right up the middle and past a couple of tacklers. He gets that across the 35 to the 36. Talked about Mettenberger being the X factor to a potential national championship for LSU. Well, you look back to this LSU team a year ago. They won 13 games. They didn't have much of a passing game. And yet you look at this graphic. Only one in five games, really. This Arkansas game right here, 208 yards. Otherwise, they got virtually nothing out of their passing offense, really other than turnovers. And you look at the Alabama games, 144 passing yards, three interceptions. Ended up costing them the national championship, their inability to be balanced offensively. And a timeout here by Towson. And we're going to take a break, too. 14.45 to go, unless you're breathing a little easier now. ESPNU College Football Prime Time is presented by 5-Hour Energy. Hours and hours of energy. And in part by two new members to the Sonic family, the Zesty Cheese Steak and Smoked Chipotle Breakfast Burritos. They decorate the hearse with Nick Saban. Rest in peace. Well, I'll tell you what, LSU has a lot of work to do before that game against Alabama. Uh, three of the last four games at home for LSU, and they have a bye week before the home game against Alabama. But let's be honest, they've got some issues to take care of before then and where they can expect a win against the Crimson Tide. Plenty of them. Uh, and we've seen that evidence tonight on the offensive side of the ball. They've got to figure out what they're going to do well. 
And as they reshuffle guys up front, they're going to have to figure out how they're going to get this passing offense going more than anything else. That's the piece that everybody anticipated. You see it's declined with each progressing year. 08, 44% of the time they're throwing the ball. In 2012, 34% of its pass. And you look at the rankings, 110th in the FBS. There's virtually no threat from the passing attack coming into this year. That's what it was supposed to be. A lot more passing, or at least more passing production. They haven't done that. They're behind schedule, the same schedule that they set for themselves a year ago when there was little passing at all. Andrews on second and ten. Oh, and throws the receiver. Nice to Rod Shepard, incomplete. Now, this was supposed to be the year to buck the trend. I think in that last series, though, we saw a glimpse of what it can be like for Mettenberger and his talented receivers like Odell Beckham, who's got a couple of touchdowns tonight. You know, we've been on Mettenberger a lot tonight. We, we've talked about the protection. You know, some of it, you see Craig's there sitting there counseling his quarterback. He wants to make sure he doesn't go in the tank. I don't think that's a problem with Mettenberger. He seems to be the type of kid that can bounce back. we got to remember, too, Passing game's a battery. I mean, it's a complimentary thing, the quarterback and receivers. These receivers got to gain some confidence in the passing game as well. Anders is going to take it. Wow. He is a good runner. We've seen that a few times tonight. Picks up the first down, gets it into LSU territory. Eric Reed finally brought him down, but Sam Montgomery had him in his sights, couldn't bring him down. You see the bottom of your screen, Sam Montgomery. That's just a missed tackle. He's got an opportunity to get him down. There's been a couple of missed tackles here tonight. Nice, nice stiff arm there by Enders. He's had 104 yards passing tonight and 74 yards rushing tonight. And one of the officials took a hit. Yeah, he was down on the field after that play. A lot, lots going on. It's that Johnny umpire. Gibbett, the you see umpire. That? And look where the umpire is. I mean, he's right there in the middle of the action, just behind the linebackers. Easy to get caught up in the trap. It's an edge pressure. West. Moves his head and gets close to the 40-yard line. Anthony Johnson making another tackle for LSU. This is a great effort tonight for Towson. They're not going to win this football game. But with the, uh, with the talent that Rob Ambrose has at Towson now that he has turned things around, I mean, think about it. He's got 13 former FBS players on the team that have transferred in, nine on this week's two deep. He's got some raw talent there to work with, and they're going to be a force to reckon with in the FCS this year. He solidified his recruiting base in their area there in Baltimore. West, hit. Boy, he never gives up. Keeps those legs moving. He's about a yard short of the first down. It's going to be third and manageable. Johnson and Minter combine on the tackle for LSU. You know, just when you think he's ready to go down and you think he's done, he finds a way to spin out of that first tackler, try to keep his legs moving and alive. You know, Coach Ambrose, he's get that recruiting going in their area, have teams. The fact that Maryland is struggling certainly helps what they want to do come play for the coach of the year. He says they recruit kids all the way through signing day and even afterwards want to make sure they maintain some relationships for these transfers back from FBS school. Anders is going to keep it himself. And he's got the first down to the 35. Let's go down to Allison. One thing Coach Ambrose takes a lot of pride in is the response and the support he's gotten from his community and the student fan base at Towson, especially as an alumni. He said it meant so much to him that during the game, pouring rain, they had 4,000 students packed in their stadium. And he said one night he was out to dinner and a gentleman actually came over, shook his hand, and said, I just want to tell you that for the first time in my life, I feel proud to be a part of Towson. And he said those moments, things like that are what really means so much to him because it shows that the impact he's having on the football field is really transcending out into the community around a school that he obviously has a lot of love for. Touching story from a second generation coach as this one's pitched out. Good run for Pfeiffer. And he takes it out of bounds at about the 24 yard line. Rob's dad, Tim, is a high school coaching Hall of Famer. He's a legend in the state of Maryland. 
has picked up a lot from his dad and still does. So does uh, his brother, Jared, who's the quarterback coach for Towson. Yeah, it's like a family affair, home games. You can look over and see his dad. There's his brother. Looks like he probably just got his driver's license. He's probably going to run this <laughs> offense next year. He gets a lot of input with his coach as far as the play calling. And keep in mind, you know, they're moving the football right here, and there's a, there's a front-line starters for LSU yep. Yep. on defense. John Chavis still has his starters out there on this LSU D. With 11.40 to go here in the fourth quarter. Now we're going to get this play whistle dead. And that's because a timeout was called for. Second charge timeout, Towson. So Towson with one timeout left here with 11.36 to go. We're going to take a break. A second and two coming up, and more on the Towson Tigers when we come back. Towson down 22 here in the fourth, but they have played well tonight for head coach Rob Ambrose, a Towson grad himself. Some other famous alum, Jermont Bushrod, Louisiana tie here. He plays for the New Orleans Saints. Sean Landetta, former punter for the Giants. John Sherholtz, the front office for the Atlanta Braves for many years. And Joe Vitt, they're a, they're the Saints staff. Also, Jeff Satterfield does stats, working on our crew in the truck tonight. He's a proud Towson alum. Can't overlook him. Hey, look at, there's another proud Towson alum. Bob Ambrose, an excellent job rebuilding this program. They got a lot to be proud of the way they performed here tonight. Outside of some special teams missteps, they look pretty good versus the stout LSU football team. Second and two after the timeout complete. Inside the 15, out at the 12 is Tom Ryan. And his helmet comes off. Bama struggling tonight. Let's go to Matt for an update. Yeah, guys, it's been a while since Old Miss has won in Tuscaloosa, but making it interesting, Jeff Scott gets in. They lead 7-6. to six. It's the first time Alabama has trailed after the first quarter in regulation since the Auburn game of 2010. Guys? All right, it's still early, but that's a good sign for Ole Miss. We're going to get a chance to see Ole Miss in Texas A&M next week. So they pick up the first down. First and 10, Terrence West. Down to the six-yard line. Well, this team not giving up, showing a lot of fight here in the fourth quarter. Well, look at this. We talk about Towson. They're not scared of this big stage. By now, the crowd's probably one that they're used to in size. Tom Ryan talking to Coach Ambrose. He's a scrappy guy. His helmet pops up. He likes it, man. Knock my head off. I'm going to maintain possession. 6'3", 210-pounder out of Philly. Just a tough, scrappy Philly kid who likes contact. I like guys like that out yeah. of wide receiver. And Towson knocking on the door. They drove the football right down the field versus an LSU starting defense. It's misaligned right now. Enders takes it himself inside the five. Eric Reed making the tackle. It's been a career night for Enders on the ground. Over 80 yards rushing for the Towson quarterback. See the top of the screen. You see Jalen Mills. They, they don't even know who's assigned where. He's Kevin Menters directing traffic. They got uncovered receivers at the top of the formation. Tom Ryan, the guy who just made the reception. Look at these numbers out there. These are starters for LSU. It's Josh Downs. It's Anthony Johnson. It's Sam Montgomery. It's Kevin Mentor. And you got Towson just driven the ball right down the field, knocking on the doorstep. On third down, they pick it up. Brant Enders lunges ahead for the first down, and it didn't matter. You know they were going to go for it on fourth down anyway. But they pick up the first down, so now first and goal. This is a rush defense. We showed it earlier. It's the third best rush defense in the country. They give up 56 yards rushing a game. We're talking about Enders here tonight. They're going to eclipse that mark easily. He's having a career night on the ground. We get an opportunity to give up what will be the second Potentially, anyway, the second rushing touchdown, only the second, that this LSU defense has allowed all season. And they drove the ball down there. They didn't pick this thing up off an easy turnover or a big return. This drive started at their own 36. West. Touchdown, Towson. What a great drive for the Towson Tigers. Started at their own 36. 12 plays later, they get it into the end zone. Terrence West, 
from a yard out. See Terrence West, he's a hard running guy, plenty of room to get up in there. Eric Reed just can't fill the gap in time. They do an excellent job giving their tailback running room, and he's able to get in there for the score. Get the ball in your own 36 yard line, you're marching 64 yards, 12 plays versus a defense like this. That's something that you can build around. It's something that you want to rebuild if you're on the LSU sideline. 31-16 now, under nine. Let's get another update on Alabama Ole Miss with Matt. Yeah, remember that lead for Ole Miss we were talking about? I think we discussed it maybe a couple of minutes ago. Well, this was the ensuing kickoff. Christian Jones following the Ole Miss touchdown with a touchdown of his own. Yeah, Alabama trailed for all of 15 seconds as Jones takes it 99 yards to the house. They're up 13 seconds. All right. Thank you, Matt. Now, let's talk about the implications of this game here, Matt, as we look at the top 10. LSU dropped from 2 to 3 after the poor showing at Auburn last week and the good showing by Oregon against Arizona. Now, if the pollsters are watching this game tonight, what happens to the LSU Tigers? I'll tell you what, that, that's the key. I mean, is anybody out there listening to us right now? There's certainly not many people in the stadium watching this ball game. But if the voters at home are paying attention to this game, I wouldn't be surprised if LSU drops yet again. And, and the lone bright spot, I think, that we could have talked about outside of a couple of big, bigger plays was this defense looked like it was still able to maintain a high level. That last drive... You better believe that John Chavis and this defensive coaching staff is going to point out to their starters, the guys that they're going to be starting next week versus the Florida Gators, yeah. and then the week after that versus South Carolina. They're going to be paying attention. They're going to be circling guys saying, what kind of effort is this? Because they got the talent. There's no question about it. But if the passing game is going to struggle and they're going to look like this offensively, the defense is going to have to step up. Jarvis Landry on the return for LSU. Well, he is hogtied, thrown down at the 28-yard line, maybe the 29. All right, flashback to LSU, Florida. This was a beautiful play two years ago. This is where uh, the Mad Hatter's legend continued to grow, picking up that key first down on the fake kick. <laughs> oh, and man. they escape with a win at Florida, 33-29. Escape is right, too. A fake field goal where it ends up being a bounce pass. You don't draw it up that way. Still able to capitalize one and done. Jarrett Lee comes in, delivers to Terrence Tolliver. That, that game always seems to be wacky. And you know, when they win, they don't blow them out. It's usually by about four points or so. Your first top 25 opponent of the year. Mettenberger on the run. Backpedaling J.C. Copeland with fullback. Incomplete. Second and ten. Well, even a even a simple pass there, we see. You know, let's let's keep in mind this is a 15-point ball game with eight minutes and 40 seconds to play. You've got your starting offense in there because they need to be in there, not because uh, you lack the backup. They need to win. They're in completion. Wow, good coverage by Ty Smith. He's got a beautiful night. For Towson, just a sophomore to Wally, North Carolina. You know, we, we, up. we hit on the schedule coming up a little bit, Clay. You know, it's plays like this, they're going to have to be able to complete. You're having a hard time completing these balls against Towson. What's it going to look like versus a Florida defense that's, from an efficiency standpoint, one of the best in the country in their pass defense? They don't pressure the passer very much. That's something that they want to do more of. But they do an excellent job versus when the ball's in the air. Odell Beckham, another big play. He has been the guy who's made big plays when they have needed it tonight. Telvon Clark makes the tackle. The LSU now in Towson territory at the 47-yard line. J.C. Copeland is down, and this could be bad news for LSU. Big J.C. Copeland. And he means a lot to their running game. It means a lot to their protection scheme. A lot what they do offensively centers on the big 280-pounder from the Grange. 
Time for your AT&T All-American Player of the Week nominee, and Geno Smith did just enough to earn that. 656 passing yards and eight touchdowns in the 70-63 win at home against the Baylor Bears. Text VOTE to 34763 from your mobile phone for a chance to win a trip to the national championship. And more bad news for LSU tonight. J.C. Copeland made it off the field, but not under his own power. And he was putting no weight on that left leg. He is big when it comes to pass protection. And in the run game, he is blowing open holes a lot of the time. And now he's on the sideline with an injury. We are talking about when the defense was on the field. You know, maybe so many young guys trying to get up some more reps. Part of the reason in a game like this, when you don't take care of business and you have work to do is your starters are in there, you can lose a starter. You see Copeland and fullback's a big piece of what they do. Quick strike, complete to the tight end, Nick Jacobs. At the 26-yard line, here's the play where Copeland got hurt. P.J. Lonergan just oversets. Frank Beltry came in on a stump from his end position. And J.C. Copeland's just trying to fill the gap. That left leg, he just can't put much weight on it at all. And you mentioned it during the break. If LSU had been able to take care of business here tonight, the starters probably aren't in in the fourth quarter. And here's another key player, Michael Ford, that either got face masked or horse collared over there. I don't see any flags. Fred Overstreet on the stop. Maybe it was just a jersey that was pulled hard. Anyway, uh, Ford was torqued pretty good. We've seen a couple of good completions now. Michael Ford able to get out on the edge. The fact that they're getting the tight end involved, I think, is encouraging. This fourth quarter means something to this LSU football team. This is meaningful football towards next week versus Florida. Michael Ford again. Down to the 12-yard line. First down, LSU. BCS countdown on ESPNU Monday. Who's going to rise? Who's going to fall? We were talking about that a little bit earlier. Still some finals to come in tonight, but there might be some movement in that top 25. You're going to want to tune in to BCS Countdown, presented by Allstate Monday at 6 on ESPNU to find out. Talked about number 11 Florida, even though they're on bye this week, because Stanford lost to Washington, and they were ranked number 8. Florida, you think, probably moves in to that top 10. Best around. SEC will have two top 10 matchups, potentially. If they slide high enough. Jeremy Hill. And he's going to pick up a couple second down and eight. So that would mean there'd be five teams from the SEC in the top ten next week, if that happens. For that period of time. Keep in mind, though, you'll have four of them playing one another. LSU, Florida, then Georgia, South Carolina. It might be the premier game next week. The Bulldogs versus the Gamecocks usually play each other the second week of the season. This year it's pushed into the month of October. See Coach Miles is probably, I think, just learned the fate of J.C. Copeland to see what's the prognosis for him. Michael Ford, over left tackle, still moving inside the five down to the four-yard line. And J.C. Copeland is one of Les Miles' favorite players. That would just be devastating if Copeland is lost for any extended period of time. Keep in mind, he just lost a starting left tackle for the season, Chris Falk, and you can see how that's affected the offensive line for LSU. This would also affect the run game. Yeah, and you know, see him in the pregame, Les Miles. You thought about J.C. Copeland, he's a lunch pail guy. And that's how you picture a fullback. Let's be real, he's 280 pounds. He's basically another offensive lineman. He's just maybe a little more athletic than the big boys typically are. But they liked him. They thought that they could get him more carries even. What he means to this offense is a lot more just the front offense. On third and two, four. Rumbles into the end zone for an LSU touchdown. Thirty-seven to sixteen. With the PAT pin. Five twenty-two to go here in the game. And you got to think, Towson's got to be running out of gas. In the phone, everything they could at this team all night long. LSU kind of kept them around with their own play. As disappointing as LSU's defensive series was with the last Towson possession, that was maybe their most complete series on offense all night long. 
Touchdown drive for LSU, but maybe they lost their starting fullback, J.C. Copeland. We hope to get an update on him before we leave the air tonight. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. Welcome back to Baton Rouge. LSU seems certain to win this game up 38-16 over Towson, but they have lost their starting fullback, J.C. Copeland, certainly for the remainder of this game. You can see him on the sidelines. He has that left knee iced with a knee sprain. We are not sure the severity of that sprain. They'll have to evaluate him more after the game, but certainly there's hopes that he will be better in time for that Florida game, such an integral part of the LSU offense. Play. No doubt about it. He means a lot to the running game. Alfred Blue out with an injury possibly for the year. That has affected the LSU running game. But J.C. Copeland's injury would also affect them. You know, he's just such a big physical presence in the run game. Especially like having another guard pulling up in there. Blowing up linebackers last week versus Auburn. I'm pretty sure that the Mike linebacker for Auburn is seriously considering another sport after that ball game. A bunch of leads facing number 44 is... Like a dump truck with bad brakes blowing up into that line of scrimmage, and now he's got a you know a flat tire. You hope that he can come back for the rest of the season. It's a play fake for Grant Enders, coming back to the football and making the catch at the 37-yard line. That's Tom Ryan again. So first down for Towson as they continue to fight here late in this football game. Tom Ryan, 17 yards and a first down at the 37. Florida awaits in Gainesville next week. They'll take on LSU. And an upsurgent Florida team, really. You know, the SEC East looking far more competitive this year. Andrews has completion to Ryan again, giving four more yards, so second down. And six for Towson. Next Saturday, Connecticut versus Rutgers. As you see J.C. Copeland make his way to the locker room. We saw Rutgers last week, an impressive upset of Arkansas. And you and I will be in Oxford, Mississippi to see Johnny Manziel, the freshman phenom quarterback for the Aggies, take on Ole Miss next Saturday night. Maybe, maybe the best pair of offensive tackles in the SEC for Texas A&M. Jake Matthews and Luke Jokic. Anders is sacked as penalty flags fly. Mario Rasco got in the backfield to bring down the quarterback. Johnny Manziel today, 453 yards passing. Personal foul, face mask, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. That's a face mask penalty on LSU. Chauncey Agayeri for that personal foul. That was actually nah, Rasko. Rasko he got the wrong guy. And he knows it, too. You talk about a look at guilt. He's looking up. That side judge, he knows that he caught him. A 15-yarder. Penalties again tonight. It's been throughout this evening. One of the most penalized teams. Tied with Florida, oddly enough. With penalties, LSU not a clean football game. Yeah, it's going to be a pass interference call here, too, I think. i tell you what. It may end up being interference. But the side judge had a heck of a better look at this thing. He didn't throw a flag. Pass interference. Number 22, defense. Penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. It's on Ronnie Feast. Back of middle linebacker. Call for the P.I. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he was all over it. You can see it. The back judge, he makes the right call. He's the guy that can see it. That's Corey Kirby. Converted tackle. Feast. A, he panics a little bit, probably, on that one. Townsend drive it again. Inside plus territory. Enders will run it. Handing off the Pfeiffer. And close to another first down. Second down and short coming up. Let's go to the studio for an update. What's coming up post game? Yeah, coming up on Sports Center, you Ole Miss giving Alabama a little test in Tuscaloosa. We'll take you around the rest of the SEC, show you how the league has done today, and a 133-point shootout in Morgantown. See you after the game.
All right, Matt, thank you very much. We look forward to it. Second down and short here for Towson. Talked about it before, Matt, the goals for LSU. And we'll revisit those after this play as we're under three minutes. Play fake. Anders is going to throw for it. And they're going to convert inside the 20. It is complete for the Towson Tigers. There's Tyler McGill with the catch. The backup fullback getting some playing time here in the fourth quarter. All right, let's go back to the goals for LSU. Secure victory. They're going to do that. But beyond that, they wanted to cut down on mistakes. Well, 10 penalties for 69 yards and three turnovers. Even though they fumbled it five times, they only turned it over three. So that's a positive. And get Zach Mettenberger on track. Well, we saw a couple of decent plays, but overall his body of work, unimpressive. Uh, this wasn't it. You know, coming into the game, you're looking at Zach, Met Zach Mettenberger on track. This is not what it looked like. You know, outside of a couple of plays, this is not what the coaching staff is doing. And Terrence West, another strong run, gets it to the 10-yard line. And you better believe defensively they're going to be coaching them up. They're largely backups in there now for LSU. Jalen Mills, a young guy, he's still out on the field. Josh Downs, they rotate a lot of guys in their defensive front. Towson's still playing football here tonight. But obviously looking forward into the what Coach Miles would call the meaty part of their schedule as they re-enter SEC play. You know, they got back-to-back -back SEC East opponents. South Carolina defense, it's a top 10 rush defense. And a defense with Jadavion Clowney and others. Get after the pass. Caught! Touchdown! What a catch by Gerard Shepard. Battling with the corner, Jalen Mills. And Shepard comes down with it. Nice touchdown drive for Towson here in the final minutes of the fourth quarter. Last two possessions. Towson just goes right down the football field. They're going after Jalen Mills. This is a starter at the cornerback position for LSU. I don't know why he thought it wouldn't be a touchdown. The kid comes down with it for a score in the end zone. Could have been P.I. as well if it's not a touchdown. As it is, another score, back-to-back -to -back touchdown scoring drive. For oh, this was fumbled to snap. Mishandled. And the holder, Jordan Dangerfield. And so the second PAT that goes awry for Towson tonight. 38-22 with a minute and a half to go. But a six-play, 80-yard drive and 345 for Rob Ambrose's club. Oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about it. Coming into this ball game, you know, early on, and look at him. You know, here's, here's Jordan Dangerfield, mishandles the snap. He just looks like a guy that would be fun to play for, no yeah. question about it. Uh, obviously, this game got away from him, and we could probably point to early in the third quarter, but Odell Beckham came came through huge for LSU, a couple of key touchdown receptions for them. And on one of them, even he was the only receiver in the route. He had to win. He certainly got it done. Tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game is Odell Beckham, a career high, 128 yards receiving tonight. We need them to step up. You know, we're talking about a passing game. Where's the passing game? Where are the receivers? They got to step up as well. No receiving touchdowns last week. Odell Beckham has accounted for the receiving touchdowns tonight. In a relatively, I would call it a listless performance by LSU. Really yeah. Top to bottom. You know, the defense, the defense looked good. Looked good early. He gave up a scoring drive. You know, here in the fourth quarter, the margin of the starters in the game. All right, if you had a vote, I don't know, maybe you do. Do you have a vote? I don't have a vote. Okay, you don't have a vote. But if you did, where would you put LSU in the top 25 next week? I think you could drop them to fifth. I think you could drop them another two spots. Does you know, Georgia deserve to move up? I think Georgia, at least in that ball game today, they could slide up with the performance versus the Tennessee offense. Although, let's be real, that defense for Georgia did not look good. So. Odell Beckham Jr., our Wrangler five-star player of the game, <laughs> dancing around, now takes a knee at the 22. Jeff Driscoll has come on for Florida here. It was a decision that the Gators had to make in camp. Who was going to quarterback this team? Well, it's obvious that Driscoll was the right choice because he's been good. Yes, he's thrived. I think the decisiveness that Will Muschamp decided to have, look, these guys aren't separating themselves. Jacoby Brissett, Jeff Driscoll throughout camp. 
probably through the first couple of games, are like, listen, we got to just pull the trigger on a guy and let him grow into the role. Quarterback is a key position in this conference. The numbers aren't always huge, but you've got to have a guy that can handle business. LSU's going to finish this game in victory formation. The number eight quarterback, Zach Mettenberger, a couple of throws early in this game that he'd want back. He was off target largely. He trips up his, over his own feet, was unaware of a corner blitz. There's a lot of things that they're still going to have to work on. Coach Miles talked about it. There's some things that they have to grow in the passing game. They think that they can get it done. But that's the key word, I think, is they think they can get it done in the passing game. They don't know that yet because it really has not been proven on the field of play. And you look at what they've got coming, South Carolina. The way they can get after a passer, stop the run. That defense is salty. That offense is improved. Well, they're going to have their hands full. They've got Alabama yet, another top 10 rush defense. They're going to have to be able to pass that football and at least be somewhat of a threat in the passing phase of the game. Well, the numbers aren't going to look that bad for Mettenberger. 15 for 26 for 238 and a couple of touchdowns, but he also had a fumble, and there were several mistakes on the offensive side. Les Miles told us before the game this week that he wanted to see some things cleaned up. Well, there's still some cleaning to do. Yeah, a lot of scrubbing, a lot of pressure washing maybe after this one. LSU will go to Gainesville next week. The Gators will be fresh because they were on bye this week. Zach Mettenberger and the Tigers get the win here tonight, but it was not easy against an FCS opponent. That does it from here for now. Let's go to Matt in the studio.